I planned, folks. Is it live? It appears to be live. It was supposed to be scheduled for 6.30. I'm trying to buy myself a little buffer. At any rate, we will play the hand we were dealt. What's up, Tim Basco? Um, I anticipated starting this live stream. Um, what was I going to say? It's 6.30. It is now 6, whatever time it is, 6.27. I was just trying to buy myself some time while I got some stuff uh, situated here. So, uh, I'm on time this time. I'm not on time. Give me just a moment, folks, because I've got this pulled up here. On my cell phone and it makes it difficult to read I can't find my camera that goes with my computer okay so let's see here hey it's stunt man <laughs> what you got stunt man <laughs> um, let's see here. I just wanted to get things set up here because I want to be able to read the comments on my actual computer and then uh, what do I want to say be able to Use, utilize the camera on my phone. I'm not real techy, in case you haven't figured it out. Uh, hopefully that you can hear me. I assume you can. Um, <laughs> kids are in there killing each other, don't worry about it. Uh, let me just make sure that uh, uh, you folks can hear me and that we're all good in that regards. And then we'll get started with What's Up Wednesday. 9, 22, 21 a dish. I don't know what's going on in the background. Don't pay no attention. All right. Loud and clear. Uh, must be a little bit of a uh, little bit of a delay because from the time I asked that to the time you responded was a bit of time. But what I did is a little bit earlier today, not too awful long ago, I put a uh, questionnaire out on the Facebook the Facebook use use yos of you use use guys uh, who follow us there. Um, I put out, you know, what uh, what did I write? I said, what would be some good What's Up Wednesday topics to shoot the sh sugar about? Uh, question. So, 117 comments that got. So I thought, in lieu of that, we could look and see what the people of Facebook asked. Uh, kind of address some of those questions or maybe spur some conversation and um, Of course, we'll I'll try to keep up with the comments and stuff here, but without having my camera for the computer I'm not super savvy with the YouTube uh, You know mobile app as far as turning stuff off So I'll just ask again, please don't use the super chat buttons because I don't know how to shut that stuff off via the cell phone uh, Not that they are unappreciated but uh, it just makes it easier and it makes it very difficult to, uh, you know, touch the phone and scroll and do all that stuff. So anyhow, we'll just hang out. We got some coffee in the Yeti. We got a Stroop waffle warming up on the top. One of my favorite snacks. And uh, without further ado, let's begin. Uh, so I'm looking on the Facebook on the SMA page. Uh, let's see here. Uh, just please make sure it's available on YouTube afterwards. Yes, David, I will, uh, unless I say something ridiculously stupid. Uh, because with all the Karens in the world, you got to kind of watch what you say because people get butt hurt so bad that if you say something silly, then, you know, just let's just roll with it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, why do batteries go flat all the time? Why don't modern cars charge up battery properly? Well, Shane, I can't really answer that question. I don't have too many customers that come in about their complain about their batteries going flat. There are a certain amount of parasitic draw or key off, ignition off draw that your car has, but usually it's in the tens of milliamps range. So let's say 20 milliamps. And depending on the amp hour rating of your battery, it should easily last a month, sometimes two months. You'd have to do the math which I'm not good at. Uh, however, if your battery on a modern car is dying once a week, you got a problem, lady. <laughs> You're gonna have to take it to a shop and have them do a battery, you know, a ignition off draw test, a parasitic draw test. And I've showed on my channel on multiple occasions, probably at least four different videos on how to check for 
ignition off draw. So, um, so that's that. Uh, let's see. Okay, video. I got to get past some of the compliments. Um, how do you decide on where to get specific parts? This is from Jim. Oh, Jimbo, he likes to be called. How do I decide where to get specific parts? I've heard you and others say that fuel pumps should be OEM replacement, if at all possible. But what about other things? And now he's had a couple of replies. Let's uh, see what they wrote. And they wrote, Jeff writes, solid question, Jimbo. Uh, Sean, he writes, I'm about to replace my truck's fuel pump and OEM Motorcraft is not available or it is greater than $500. So how do we decide where to get specific parts? Uh, most of the time experience, uh, let's say for example, like you've been burned because you've used a dormant part on a said project and again and again and again, and it just, it just burns you every time you lose money, you end up having to pay for it out of your own pocket. Customers pissed, you're pissed, everybody's pissed off. At that point, you probably go OEM. Or I look at it in the sense sometimes like let's well take for example yesterday I had a, a, a later model Tahoe in like a 16 I think it was or 17 or 18 somewhere's in there needed rear brakes go to look up the rear brakes I have no problem going to Napper uh, using their brakes but there was a million questions on this different thicknesses and variations and rotor sizes and pads and you know you know it wasn't just like you know police option non police option it had a lot of options. In that case, and there was no definitive way, I looked up the OEM numbers. The OEM numbers wouldn't cross to aftermarket. So at that, at that point, I told the customer, I said, customer, lady, here's what I suggest. Your original brakes lasted 70 whatever thousand miles it was. My suggestion would be, let's put on the exact same brakes we took off. I mean, you have no complaints. They wore nicely. The rotors didn't get rusty and chunk up. Uh, let's just go back with the OEM. Yeah, they were $180, you know, a rotor. The pads were, you know, 80 some dollars for OEM pads. And this isn't AC Delco, this is actual, you know, genuine GM, you know, right from China, you know, good quality GM brakes. So that's what I did in that case. Same thing with GM fuel pumps. I typically, uh, well, that's a Toyota, but let's say we have a, you know, late model Chevy pickup in, you know, 10 or newer, you know, 07 up, you know, that body style, the new body style. If we get one of those in, I will go, uh, elect to use OEM fuel pumps on them, A, because there are multiple options, B, they fit well, uh, and C, I can buy them cheaper than I can buy any pump from, you know, Napper or Advance or down here, if, you know, Fast Freddy's. Uh, yes, you can go online and buy your Dollar Tree, you know, piece of crap, you know, plastic fuel pump from, you know, Fleve or Amazon for $19.99. I can't do that to a customer. I have to, you know, First of all, I have to stand behind my work. You know, I have to warranty it. We offer a two-year, 24,000-mile parts and labor warranty. So therefore, you know, I, you know, typically will only use, you know, good quality parts. But I guess to circle back to the, to the question, how do I decide? Um, gosh, it's such a, such a broad topic. Experience. Um, experience is the number one thing. Um, cost not uh aftermarket is not always cheaper so don't uh, don't think just because you're heading down an app or you're heading to the rock auto that it is cheaper um we make less profit on oem parts uh which is fine because i would rather have a better quality part that is cheaper to my customer and make less money myself than to sell a part that's cheaper for me to buy that i make more money that they get less quality and it's probably going to bite me if that makes sense I know it's not a good business model, it's not a way to stay in business, but it's a way to keep people from knocking on your door, and it's a way to keep people from getting pissed off. <laughs> Decline. Have to shut her down. Um, anyhow, so hopefully that kind of answers uh, a wee bit of the question. So let's see. We'll skip down through here. Uh, how do you deal with... Uh, dumb customers, how do you deal with pain in the airs cars, aka the junk ones? Um, how do I deal with dumb customers? I don't know what that means, uh, Robert, as far as dumb customers, like they're uninformed about their cars, like, or they're just like pain in the ass customers, because those are different. Um, 
dumb customers, we'll say, we'll, we'll call them, we'll say uneducated customers. Let's say they just, they just don't know nothing about a car. I try to break it down in layman's terms the best I can. Uh, depends on what the, um, uh, what the question is or what I'm trying to reiterate to them about their car. Uh, and sometimes, in a lot of cases, if it's something that can be physically seen, let's say, you know, we have an uneducated customer that comes in. They don't know, they don't know boo. They know where to put the gas, gas and go, baby, that's it. And they come in and they say, I got this noise. You know, I don't know what it is. So we pick up in the air and the ball joint's ready to fall out of it. Well, I can go in there and say, well, dumb customer, you need ball joints. And it's $7 billion. They're like, oh my gosh. You know, they, they don't even know. The easiest thing to do in that situation I go in and get said customer, we come out, we laugh, we talk, and I say, hey, look at this. I show them, this is your steering. You obviously know when you turn your steering wheel left to right, your wheel turns. It pivots on this little thing we call the ball joint. And then I show them the good one, then we go show them the bad one. We huck a chuck of that thing around, and they say, oh my gosh, that's loose, fix it. You know. So sometimes it's as simple as that. It's as simple as showing, or trying to uh, explain and, um, I don't know the words I'm looking for. Um, you know, just put it in terms that they understand. Make it uh, uh, what relatable with something that perhaps they know. Maybe you know a little bit about this person and what they do, and you can somehow make it relatable to their trade or hobby or something. Uh, but like I say, if it's something that can be physically seen, that's usually um, quite easy to handle because you can just bring them out and show them. But and don't call them dumb. <laughs> you know, you can't be like you're the dumbest guy I ever met. <laughs> so anyhow let's see Todd wants to talk about the lack of inventory chip shortage uh, I'll be honest with you Todd I don't keep track of uh, the news or anything like that I know it's a thing I don't know I see all the car dealerships have no cars I don't you people can worry the snot out of yourselves by worrying about what's going on outside of your little corner of the world some people say I'm real stupid because I don't pay attention to anything that's going on around me. Politics, the news, any of that stuff. Because it will make me crazy. I know my limitations. And I know how it makes me feel. And I know what it does to me uh, physically and emotionally. And I have some really bad tendencies to be a really bad person. And so I make it my habit, make it my goal to not look into that stuff and not to feed off it because I know myself enough to know that I very easily can do that. And I know what it does to a person. I know what it does to their family. And I choose to not pay attention. Does it make it all go away? No, it doesn't. Um, does ignorance make me exempt from it? It doesn't. However, it makes me from going on a killing spree so there's that. And it also makes me from being a super angry, super ugly person. Uh, so that's, the, that's what I try to do. Um, like I say, I'm not a coward. I don't hide from anything. But I just tend to stay out of some of the garbage. Um, but uh, anyhow, that's that. We're not going to talk about any of that stuff. Carrying on. Uh, Scott wants to know about weird things found in customers' cars. That's a good one, Scott. I'd have to think about that. I typically don't rummage through their cars. Um, I would say I haven't found weird things, but I have seen some insanely nasty things. Um, rarely will I deny working on a customer's car. However, I had one here the other day for a power seat complaint. Uh, had two inoperative power seats or certain functions of the power seats. We'll say I won't even say what kind of car it is because I don't want to really call this person out. But I went outside and I opened up that door and I just about fell over. I've done some bad things, seen lots of bad things, and I've smelled lots of bad things. And I got a pretty strong stomach. And I opened that door and it hit me in the face like a bat. I just I backed up a little bit. And when you get something real pungent like that, it's best to kind of keep your teeth together and breathe through your teeth. And it's a, it's a good way to fight a gag reflex or, you know, if you see something really horrific and you don't want to throw up, 
you know, if you clench your teeth and kind of breathe through them, it keeps you from, from vomiting. I was pretty close, not gonna lie. I mean, I was super close where I'm, you know, I, it was so bad that I came in for a second whiff and, you know, when it hits you in the nose and just stops your breath, oh, it's good. So, needless to say, I had to call the young lady and tell her I was pretty blunt. Just said, listen, your car is nasty. And that's the exact words they use. I said, I'm sorry. I said, I, to, in order for me to fix your seats, I've got to be able to stick my head down there. And I said, it is nasty. I said, I'm sorry. I'm not the guy to help you. And <laughs> we went our separate ways. So uh, that was that. <laughs> no charge. <laughs> Have a nice day. Uh, Sean, again, another Shan. Uh, top fan. He's got a top fan badge, whatever that is. He wants to know the ability or the availability of quality parts. I guess uh, define quality and I'll tell you the availability. Um, I haven't yet come across stuff that we haven't been able to get. Currently, the things that are hard to get are some OEM parts, uh, oil filters, and brake rotors, oddly enough. At least in my little corner of the world. Now, I know that's different depending on where you live. But that's what we're seeing here. Oil filters, brake rotors, and some OEM stuff. Um, and I don't think it's a lack of raw material. Uh, when we look, because we buy a lot of stuff through Napper, obviously, so I can see, you know, on our Napper system where everything's coming from, what warehouse they're in, what distribution center. And there are thousands, I assume, because it'll state on there, you know, 99 plus. They're all in the warehouse. They're all in the Napa main central warehouse. There are none of them in distribution centers. And we have to pay shipping. So it's, it's ridiculous. Napa's really frigged up right now because they have tons and tons of parts in their warehouses and apparently no able bodies to stick them on a Napa truck and get them to the distribution centers and then from the distribution centers to our local stores. So... Uh, so that sucks. So we'll end up waiting and waiting and waiting. But fortunately, we're we're usually several weeks out on appointments. So the good the good part is, you know, let's say we have to order it and we're waiting for it to be shuttled so we don't have to pay shipping. That week buffer that we have for our appointment usually works out pretty well. So um, that's that. And uh, Jason, uh, the most eligible bachelor, he drives a brand new 21 Chevrolet because obviously I pay too much. And he can't even get an oil filter for his truck. I think he went to get an OEM because it came up on his first oil change and they don't have oil filters. So we did get an aftermarket, you know, we put a nap or, you know, nap or gold on it. So, so that's that. Um, my favorite tool and my most overrated tool. <laughs> well, my favorite tool, we can't talk about. Uh, my next favorite tool uh, beyond that is my noodle uh, because without your melon, you got nothing. I don't care how many tools you got in your box. Uh, and the most overrated tool? Gosh, I don't know. I, I think to have a t tool that's overrated, you would have to have somebody really raving like, this is the best tool ever. And I could be like, that freaking tool is overrated. But yeah, my favorite tool is my thing in my head. And then physical handy tool. Probably the a toss up between the hammer and the screwdriver. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Not an easy one. Uh, we could talk about small business ownership. That would take some time. Uh, let's see. Some, not, some, not all questions I'm going to be able to answer there, folks. Just uh, FYI. Uh, let's see. Uh, Rob here, he writes, uh, let's talk about parts availability, inflation, used car market madness. What's Hannah doing now? How Jeep can claim a vehicle with aluminum axle housing is considered trail ready. Uh, why Trinity will soon be better at math than you are. Bad air follow up. Why is, why the Quadrajet is the greatest carburetor ever, ever developed? You know, stuff. Oh, and Scotty Kilmer. <laughs> well, Rob, not much to talk about there. Uh, I'll pick one. Uh, how Jeep can claim to make an aluminum axle housing and considered trail ready. I don't know if he's throwing stones at my Dub J. Uh, however, uh, my Dub J does have a Dana 44A 
So that's the aluminum center section, which is conveniently the same size as the Dana 44 HD, uh, which I put air lockers in and I beat the balls off it and it hasn't broke. I assume if you're out uh, perhaps, you know, rock crawling, which we don't have big rocks on here. We just have trails and mud and blood and the beer and logs and soft stuff. So if we hit stuff with it, it doesn't seem to mess up the aluminum housing. Uh, however, you know, by simply putting a skid plate on the bottom of them, it might help, but anyway, at TDM, I see you, jerkwad. <laughs> Anyhow, I don't know. You would really have to talk to a Jeep guy, like a guy who wears a Jeep hat all the time, loves Jeeps, you know, eats, sleeps, breathes Jeeps. You know, if my Dana 44 aluminum housing busted in the back of the Jeep, I'd probably just go down to Wilbert's, you pull it a bath, even though they don't sponsor us. And... Uh, you know, just get another one, swap the gear set over and everything else and bada bing bada boom. But uh, I don't think my Jeep has enough traction to to break the housing, you know. So I don't know. Now my, my AMC Model 20 I used to have in my Scrambler, cast iron housing, I ripped the entire center section right out of it. Um, where the axle tubes go in, they weren't welded very strong, so one day I'm out just giving it the beans and it snapped the drive shaft, broke the yoke, and stood the pinion straight up against the bottom of the box. So, and that was cast iron, but either way. Where are we at here? Is there such a thing as too much fluid film? Chris, is there such a thing as a girl that's too pretty? No. Uh, let's see. Two-ply or single-ply toilet paper? Well, Pete, if your fingers ever broke through, which, if you're a single-ply user, I know it probably has, then we'll know the answer to that is two-ply folded over so you have four, just to be safe. Ah, let's see. I wonder if my coffee, if I can drink it yet. Gotta get the top off. I don't know who the mother lover is that invented the Yeti. I swear to you, you can put boiling hot coffee in this thing. You put this plastic lid on it with an opening. You leave it on your toolbox. You come back four hours later, you are going to burn your face off. Trust me, I, I ended up spit. Every time I use this thing, I'm like, I'll get some coffee. I'll come back in a half an hour. Nope. Still like lava. Oh, it's amazing. McDonald's coffee with Dunkin' Donuts creamer. It's got to be some sort of sin. Um, but that's what we're doing. Uh, let's see. Joseph King wants to talk about scan tools. Well, Joseph, we can't because we don't have six days. Um, oh, I missed this something. Oh, gosh. Goodness gracious. Hold on, folks, here. Uh, I did ask. Uh, please don't ask again. Please don't use the super chat uh, buttons or the super stickers or anything that's super. Uh, but anyhow, we'll try. Let's see here. What do we got? Uh, Joe Schroeder, he wrote uh, 3030 or I-6 for the deer hunting in dense woods. But I, I don't know, Jake, either one, whichever one you shoot the best. Tom P, Eric, I have the same shirt. You've got a shirt like this with a pocket in it? The only way you can get that is to visit SMA. So it must be we've met Tom. If yours doesn't have a shirt, it's a fake. Um, anyway, is there a tool like the RB3 that I can use on my Jeep Dub J that talks to the TCM? Um, most any of your aftermarket uh, tools there, Tom, OBD2 tools will talk to it. I am not super familiar with small OBD2 code readers uh, and their abilities. Um, but yeah, I mean, all the, like your all tells, your 808s and 908s and 909s and all those, uh, they, they certainly will. But uh, anywho, uh, let's see, Mr. Giggles, <laughs> his real name is Giggles. Uh, Thanks for the videos, fix my 05 escape, now I have an 08 escape and I'm more comfortable fixing and diagnose typical issues from Brooklyn. Yeah, he's down here in Brooklyn where they talk funny. <laughs> like cameraman does. <laughs> I love that guy. Uh, anyhow. Well, good. I'm glad that uh, we were able to work on the uh, escape. 
And then I don't know if you mean you fixed your 05 by buying an 08, but either way, you fixed it. <laughs> That's how I fix them. Oh, it's broke. Go get another one. Let's see, Bill. Oh, no, Matt, he writes, a segment on your sweet vintage forklift. Well, Matt, I got rid of my forklift about four years ago. So uh, she was a yow. She was pretty sweet, but uh, it's gone. I gave it to my brother because he could use it more than I could. Uh, let's see. Then Bill writes, uh, you've done many repairs on vehicles sent to you by other shops. Have you ever been stumped by a vehicle with a problem and had to send it to another shop? I'm betting the answer is no. I don't believe so, Bill. I'd have to give it some deep thought. Uh, I don't remember being beat by one and having to send it to another shop. Now, with that being said, I do know my limitations too. Uh, for example, like uh, I don't do a ton of transmission drivability problems because I don't rebuild transmissions in house. So those, if I get a customer comes in, he's explaining to me his faults. Like, you know, it does this, I got the shift flare, it, you know, I go and it, you know, it blows into neutral when it starts to shift. Uh, those typically, immediately, I will just refer them to a local transmission shop. Uh, everybody's got another breaking point, kid. And that's mine, that's one of my weaknesses. So those, I will, I will farm out, but I don't take them in and then farm them out, uh, perhaps. I could, but I think that's kind of a shady thing to do. I don't believe that if you bring your car to me, you want me to send it to another shop. Uh, although I do work for almost every other local shop here in our immediate area and fix their cars and do their programming and you know keep their customers happy. It's kind of a bad business model, but whatever. I don't. I don't. I honestly don't care. You bring, they can bring me all the cars they want. I'll fix them. What they do with it, from their standpoint. That's their problem. I don't get wrapped up in it. I don't ask because I don't care. You pay me, adios muchacho or muchacha or whoever. Uh, Dan Leduc, <laughs> he says, include SMA's most eligible bachelor. Give the ladies an email address to submit their application. No, we can't do that, Dan. I don't want poor, poor old Jay getting bombarded by all the ladies. And I don't know if a lady who watches a Car repair channel is kind of lady G wants. I'm not sure. I uh, just wanted to shout out. Just wanted to shout out work for the AA in the UK. Also, could you just say money light? <laughs> the money light. What's the AA in the UK? Somebody enlighten me as to what that is. That the Alcoholics Anonymous. He just lives there. <laughs> um. Todd Carson, well, another guy, Mark, he asked about his 2014 Volkswagen. Let's well, know if it has a time belt or chain. I wouldn't know, but what I would do is a Google search and see, or I could look it up for you, but uh, I would just Google search it. Uh, Automobile Association, okay. It's like AAA. Maybe he could do a What's Up Wednesday. We can ask him for sure. Oh, yeah. Todd here wants to talk about archery. Oh, Todd. Todd, Todd, Todd. I would love to, because as you know, I'm a Matthews man. And archery is one of my real passions, far beyond the passions of automobiles. I absolutely love archery. And it's one of my favorite things to do. But uh, we can't talk about it, because this is the South Main Auto Channel, not the South Main bow shooting channel. Um, so anyways. Uh, do I have any thoughts about the ice, where the ice is heading? Is it staying or will it go and re be all replaced with electric motors? I don't know. Uh, I don't follow it as closely as I should there, Frank. So by ice, he means the internal combustion engine. Um, will it be replaced? I don't know. I think it's a bunch of political mumbo jumbo because now that we've lost the rule and reign of King Andy, we have Queen Hoopla or whatever the hell her name is. And uh, she's put up a pretty aggressive plan uh, in New York State to, you know, outlaw the sales of, you know, diesel vehicles and blah, blah, blah. Same political crap they do every year. Um, will there be more? I'm certain there probably will be. 
Uh, hopefully, I'm long gone, done, and retired. But a lot of people are going to say, no, you're not. It's going to be here in the next couple of years. Well, if you think about it, most of the I'm working on is like 10 or 12 years old. So I think I've got a little bit of a buffer. Because that means in like 10 or 12 years, I'll be working on the 21s and 22s, which are still internal combustion, the majority of. And then I'll be in my 50s. And Anyways, I'm not getting too excited or too butthurt over it because there is very few people in our area in our geographic area where where i live and the cars that i service there are very few people that have hybrids i mean i have three customers out of hundreds and hundreds of customers that even have a hybrid um you know i mean people around here they don't drive you know volkswagens and audis and mercedes and bmws that's why i don't work on european cars simply because i don't see them there is nobody around our area that has them now if i specialize excuse me, if I specialized in them and attracted those clients, I'm sure they would come out of the woodwork, you know? I mean, Corning is not too far from here and uh, that's gonna be the nearest, biggest place. And if you were a guy who was specialized in electric cars and hybrids and, um, you know, or European cars, you could draw the people from those from those areas. But I don't see, uh, I don't see the need for me to try to, you know, work I don't see the need for me to piss myself off by trying to work on Euro trash and tooling up for it and learning about it and trying to become a specialized guy in something that I don't really care to work on anyways. You know, why not grab the bread and slop up the gravy that's already in your area? But that's just my, that's my two cents on it. I don't know anybody that works on Euro cars that's really happy. <laughs> uh, I know they make a boatload of money, but I also know they're usually pissed off all the time. And even though they're like, oh, I'm 225 an hour to work on these, but I hate my life. So, but that's just in my little inner circle of people that I know. But uh, anyhow, <laughs> that's that. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, let's see. This guy, oops, he says second try. Sorry. I Like again, DN Pra, I did ask, please, please don't use the super chats. Please, thank you. Uh, but let's see here. My bro-in-law is a Subi Tech. I got him the Astro Ball Joint tool, and he loves it. Well, he should because it's an awesome tool. Uh, do you have two or three other must-have tools for Subis? So I would say if you're um, a Subi guy, I would say the you know the cam seal installer for like the EJ engines, the rear main seal installer for the EJ engines, and the camshaft holding tools for the EJ engines. If you want to properly uh, torque the camshafts. Oh, and the other thing I would say is this little guy. Hold on. Where are you at, Subaru? Is it gone? I don't know where it is. Oh, right here. So this mid-size 14 millimeter 12 point snap-on makes it. This, uh, you can do this to put the head bolts uh, on the car if you elect to not pull the engine and this will clear all the camshafts so it's a special socket that Subaru or Snap-on makes the part number is a Sierra 6214 made in USA wherever that is and that's a great little handy socket they have anyhow hopefully that answered your question sorry I missed you on the first uh, first go around there pal let me uh, fix my screen here now anyhow Uh, it's Wednesday again, yes, sir. Uh, let's see. The super scraper is the best tool you've shown that I've bought. Oh, there you go, TDM. And what he's talking about is one of my favorite tools. This is the OG maple handled super scraper. Fantastic tool. Okay. Comes in a variety of sizes if you like them um, short and thin. Still gets the job done. Or you got short and thin, medium length and stout. Or the all-time favorite, crowd pleaser, long and thin. There she is. Carbide tip. This thing will destroy an aluminum head faster than you can say, holy crap, I just destroyed a head. So there's those there. All right. Super scrapers. Fantastic tool. Now, last but not least, your classic 9532 by Astro. 
striking resemblance against the uh, OG Super Scraper. Uh, don't really know what's happening there. Perhaps the patent ran out on that, or perhaps there was no patent on it. Perhaps nobody checked. I don't know. But uh, great tool, same concept, piece of carbide on the end. This will beat the heck out of any OG style scraper all day long, except for this one. This is another one of my favorites. This is uh, Mac Tools no longer makes this. It is a square cut carbide scraper there. However, it will beat, you know, these style scrapers all day long. Now these have their purpose. Uh, the carbide though, that's the way to go. Whoa, son of a mother! Are you guys okay? This is what happens. You start frigging around just like your mother told you. I hope I didn't kill no one. I just had you teeter tottering up here all gingerly. Son of a frig hole. Bear with me, folks. This is amateur hour at the club. Where are we at? Come on, baby. Good enough? Good enough. I'm still ugly. Drop my super scraper. Right in my stroop waffle. Now it's called a stooper scraper. <laughs> you see what I did there? <laughs> now let's set these down. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Click things on my computer over here. Okay. Whew. I don't know why this has to have a cover on it, but I put it back on. Just like my super scrapers. I still keep them in the OG tubes. I don't know why. Um, anyhow, that's it. That's it for show and tell. Let's carry on, shall we? This seems weird to me. Is it weird? Do things get weird? I'm trying to balance this whole damn thing on top of my computer. Computer. Uh, don't hit the power button. Whoa. Okay, are we good? Is everybody good? Can you hear me? Yeah, make sure. Okay, everybody can hear me. At least two people can. Nobody else cares. Ah, sorry for um, knocking you guys over there. Oh, uh, let's see. Shop tour, including the mysterious upstairs, which I imagine is a vast dark warehouse filled to the rafters with boxes and crates and containers of every type and hose and fasteners and automotive chemicals known to man. That's what Chad thinks. I wish, Chad, and yes, you're partially correct. However, I can barely balance the phone on my balancing thing that's over here. So, um... So we're not going to do a shop tour of the upstairs. The only thing I keep up there is mysterious items that are uh, resemble a vast dark warehouse filled to the rafter with boxes, crates, containers, every type of hoses and fasteners and automotive chemical snow to man and a few oil filters. Anyhow. Oh, let's see here. Uh, Desert Cun. I think it's how you say it. Absolutely loves the way we attack problems and solve them. Although, actually taught me to deconstruct every problem into smaller ones. Well, good. I'm glad that's how, it, uh, how the cookie crumbles for you, so to speak. And that's all you can do. Take a problem, break it down, chase it around. That's a little rhyme I just made up. And it may not be true. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Blair says... Uh, if you put thread locker and anti-seize on the same bolts, would the fastener god strike you down? You may stop the whole time-space continuum if you did that. I don't really know what would happen if you did thread locker and anti-seize. However, Loctite does make anti-seize, correct? It's kind of a... <laughs> what? Loctite anti-seize? Okay. Who's the joke on now? That'll make you wonder. <laughs> Anyways. <sighs> Boy, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of people up on the YouTube that ask a lot of questions. And um, we're 
39 minutes, 40 minutes even into this. Uh, let's see, Brian writes, not wanting to sound weird, but that's always a good way to start out, Brian, because that just makes you sound weird. Anyhow, let's hear what weird O'Brien has to say. <laughs> just kidding, Brian, you're not weird. What about a day or two in the life of Erico and family outside of the shop, i.e., which means, for example, unwinding from the week's work, hunting, fishing, golf. I don't play no golf. Um, well, Brian, that's a, a neat idea. However, it is not real. What do they call it? PR. Man, these damn mosquitoes this year are cray cray. Um, I, it's not PR public relations. I'm not a good PR person outside of the YouTube. On the the YouTube here in the shop, I try to keep it pretty civil, pretty neutral, so to speak, um, except Corvette videos. People get really pissed over those and it's friggin' hilarious and I, I love it. And uh, anyhow, <laughs> we won't talk about that. I try to keep it pretty non-controversial. Of course, you can always uh, criticize, you know, how I do something and stuff in that. that don't mess water off a duck's butt, you know. But uh, outside of work, I do a lot of stuff that would be extremely controversial, especially in today's, uh, today's society. There is a lot of Nancys and a lot of Karens and a lot of very sensitive people that if I posted stuff that I do outside of this little world you see here, there's so many crybabies that would be just devastated that uh, that it wouldn't work out well. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, so I just leave that alone. I skip right over that um, because like I say, people nowadays are, are sensitive uh, extremely uh, to the point where I just, I don't understand uh, my brain just doesn't work that way. I don't compute it. And um, so I'm not going to get into that. But however, that's a great video. And I would love to share with you folks uh, some of the stuff I do if the world wasn't so effed up. But that's the world we live in. So we'll skip that and we'll keep on keeping on. And um, that's that. So uh, let's see. Jordan. He writes, the biggest, uh, so I asked a question, what should we talk about? He thinks we should talk about the biggest difference between working on heavy equipment and the typical auto mechanics. Well, let's see. With regular auto mechanics, you go home with all of your fingers usually at the end of the day. You're not black from here to your toes with grease and oil. You're not mad. You don't smell like cigarettes. You don't smell like diesel fuel. Um, your back doesn't kill you. Um, let's see, your fingernails aren't jet black. Your wife still loves you. There's a lot of differences uh, of not being a heavy duty guy. And with these little pea shooters, I'm not a heavy duty guy. All right, we'll just throw that right out there. When, I'm, when you're taking out starters that weigh as much as you do, or you're doing a set of camelbacks or anything, even a peat air leaf, those things are heavier now. All of that stuff's heavy. You know, you're like, oh, let me change the tire. Oh, I forgot the tire's like 300 pounds. You know, so there's a lot of differences between the heavy duty guy. But the world needs heavy duty guys because that's what makes the world go round. Uh, without heavy duty guys, there's no trucks. Without trucks, there's no Amazon. And without Amazon, we all die. So simple as that. Um, <laughs> Come on, baby! <laughs> That's for Jer, Jer Barry likes to be called. Um, William, he loves our content and narratives. Have a good day. We will. Thank you. And the Dare Man. Uh, 2003 Chevrolet 60 when taking off, very boggy, but giving it more throttle that comes out of it. Any thoughts? It's boggy until you mash on it. God, what would I look at? Um... The only thing I can think of, uh, right offhand, uh, the Dare Man, is if you uh, go to full throttle. Let's say you know you're taking off either six O Chevy and she's she's bogging, and then you just put the pedal to the plastic and the thing tips, you know, takes right off. The only thing I would think at that point is it goes into wide open throttle mode. 
it uh, goes into open loop at that point. So as long as it's not transmission related, you know, anything drivetrain, you know, binding, anything weird like that, um, the only difference between driving part throttle and full throttle is the lack, you know, is fuel control, the difference between closed loop and open loop. And so I guess what I would look at is when I was driving part throttle and it was boggy, I'd be looking at my fuel trims like, eh, you know, how's this engine running? You know, um, do we have a mass airflow sensor that's skewed? Would that still screw up at wide open throttle? That would probably still act up. That's what I'd be looking at. I'd be looking at my fuel trims just to see what this engine's doing, providing it's in the gear that it's supposed to be. I guess right offhand, that's what I would think. But I've been wrong a million times before, pal. <laughs> uh, Emerson wants to know what my opinion on the Honda 3.5 liter is. Uh, common problems with things worth knowing. I have an 08 Ridgeline. Sending you love from Chicago. Uh, I think the Honda 3.5's a pretty darn good tooting engine as long as it doesn't have variable cylinder management uh, which i don't believe the 08 does uh keep your valves adjusted do the valve adjustment do your timing belt and and have fun and carry on uh let's see here where's my jeep my jeep is at home currently with a broken power steering pump Last time we were beating her up through the woods, the power steering pump, which is the fourth power steering pump from Cardone that I've put on it, uh, this one also exploded. Uh, they all do something different. Some just shit the whole pulley right off the front of it. Some of them break the input shaft. Some of them just whine excessively. Uh, this one blew all of its guts uh, inside internally and made just driving along and all of a sudden it started making a little bit of racket, so I give it the old uh, rev up tune up in neutral, and bada bing, bada boom, no more steering. <laughs> so, so that's where the Jeep's at. Uh, probably we'll sit there till next year sometime. Uh, we're coming up by deer season in nine days, and my whole world shuts down at that point. So, I probably won't fix it. Uh, let's see. Why should a young person consider going into this trade? Pros and cons. Also, if you had to do it over again, would you have gone into this profession? Oh my goodness, Mark. Uh, I'm not the right person to ask for that. Um, there is a lot of people that are, you know, really big advocates of this uh, trade and will really say, you know, like, yes, you know, go for it, do it. I'm not the perfect guy to ask for that. I will skip to the second portion of your question where it says, also, if you had to do it over again, would you have gone into this profession? And I can't sit here and knock this profession. It has made a good living for me. Uh, it's made a good living for my family. Um, I've been able to take what I know, my talents, and you know, provide for uh, provide for my family and you know, utilize my talents to help. Uh, you know the local community um so would i've gone into it again i don't have any reason to not to is what i would say are there other things that i would like to do uh yeah uh, actually i my initial plan was so things i would like to do i'd like to either be a mechanic i'd like to be a farmer i would like to own a salvage yard um, salvage yards pretty high on my list. Loved, I would have loved to have owned a scrapyard. Um, I don't know why, but I just I love the scrapyard. I love having access to all that stuff. It's like having a, it's like being able to collect all the crap you want to collect illegally, if that makes sense. Um, I love salvage yards. Uh, so let's see. And what I was going to go to school for, I was actually going to go to the Colorado School of Trades for gunsmithing. That was my, that was the direction my life was heading when I was a young man. Uh, working in a gun store, working with a gunsmith for you know many years, as in my younger days, and that was where I was going to go. And and life took a different turn, different direction, and uh, never, never played out. Ended up saying, "Dow with it," and worked with my dad, and boom, here we are, twenty some odd years later, twenty two years later. So never lived that dream. Uh, let's see. I used to, I remember seeing Mrs. O 
come into the store. So the place I worked used to be called Ed Hart's Gun Supply. It's a big, big store here in Bath, New York. And I worked there. And uh, Nestor would come in there with her old man. And she was pretty, pretty young at that time. She was probably 16, 17, because I was 18 or so. But yeah, I remember her coming in there. Yep, and then uh, the rest is history from there. We started dating not too much longer after that. She didn't have no interest in me at that point because she was living a different little lifestyle than I was. However, I've always been a pretty smart fella. And I knew her dad from working at the gun store. And I knew her mom a little bit here and there because her mom worked at a place that I would go to. And then, uh, of course, she's retired since then. So... I became real friendly with the mom. You see what I'm saying? So if you work that angle, you know, I'd go up and I'd go up and visit like I was going to go up and visit her. And I'd chit chat with her mom and we'd talk and we'd laugh. And then I got her mom to like me. And then her mom kind of worked on her. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's just a different angle. It's problem solving. It's taking the big problem, breaking it down into smaller problems. And then boom, problem solved. You know what I mean? How did we get off on that? Mrs. O could probably tell a little bit better. I think she, she is in the office. You want me to go get her? Stand by. Mrs. O. Stand by. She's coming, I think. So everybody behave. I'm pretty sure that's how it went down. Maybe that's how it went down in my head. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that's that's a good tip for anybody out there. And if you're a young man and you're looking, you're looking for a young lady. Because that's how it was when I was growing up. Now I know things are different. However, if you're a young man looking for a young lady, my motto always was, Check out the mom first. Not in a weird, creepy way, but just know that when your future woman, if you live with them, they grow up, there's a pretty strong chance that they're gonna look like their mother. So you can kind of get, I'm giving advice. Oh, no. There's a pretty good chance. Now think about it. Now you guys that are older, you turn around right now and look at your lady and be like, he's right, he is right. And I bet you I'm pretty close. Um, could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. However, that was my thing. I'd always, always look at the mom. So, um, but anyways, I was just telling the folks here, Mrs. O. How hot my mom is? Well, I was telling, <laughs> no, not only that. I was telling them the angles that I worked of working your mother to boom. Yeah. Because I told them, they asked me, I guess this all got started because they asked me what I would do if I wasn't wasn't a car guy which I'm not a car guy they wanted to know what I would do if I didn't work on cars so I told them a farmer B I would own a scrapyard like Wilbur's you pull a bath um I don't remember what else I told them. and then I told them that I was gonna go to college school trades and you know working at the gun store blah 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 and I told them that the young the hot Mrs. O would come in with her pop pop it was like what 12? no you were not 12 I was working there so I'm, I was 18 17 to 18 so, so what, I was six, probably 15, 16, 17. I was there for I a lot of years. 17, yeah. I wasn't that old. Now you make me sound like a freaking creep. <laughs> you, you do have a lot of white hair, so you must be way older than me. I'm not way older than you, Mrs. O. <laughs> You're old. But anyhow, I was telling the folks that you didn't really have much. I didn't tell them like what you were wearing typically when you came there, although that is vividly in my mind. Okay, so yeah, I probably was a little bit older than Yeah. <laughs> Am I right? Give me some of that. Um, but I was just telling them the angle that I worked of going up to, vi to visit your mother. Yeah. And then make your mother like, and I was just trying to give these young men advice out here that that's something that they could do. I don't even know how we got on this topic. <laughs> Why am I out here? Because I wanted to make sure they think that I'm lying to them. I don't know if they Well, I don't know everything you said, so I'm not going to vouch 
for you. But that's what I did, right? Come up to your mom. I think you were hoping I was there, but I wasn't, so then you had to work my mom. Work it. Smooch my mom. Yeah, so she would like me, and then she would tell you that you had to like me because your current boyfriend was a dink. That's true. And that's how it works. Next thing you know, you're married and you got three kids. Whoa. So be careful what you wish for. But, um, anyhow. They probably want to know something more about cars and... Uh, they do. So, um, we're doing a, a Facebook thing here where people ask the questions on the Facebook. They ask the questions over here. We're looking up here. It's a lot going on. Hmm. Thanks, John. And, uh, so what are you doing in there? I got a lot going on, too, like dishes and getting ready for tomorrow. That's a good woman right there. <laughs> that makes me want to tell my joke about the she shed. <laughs> All right, get out of here. Hey, come on now. <laughs> Jeez, get out of here. All right, thanks, old girl. Yeah, I gotta go. I got stuff to do. Yeah. Time's running out. All right, you're done. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Love you. Love you. <laughs> Anyways, where were we at, folks? Uh, now that we've got that out of the way, um, whew, I'm all free of what he's talking about. Uh, anyways, oh, can't steal New York in the hay house. Uh, let's see. Oops, she said dishes. <laughs> uh, anyway, I won't say my she shed joke because it's kind of, it's not, what is it, sexist? I guess it would be, even though I don't mean anything by it. Uh, let's see. What's up with the Tundra? I think the Tundra has some Veltrain problems. It's got the big 4.7 liter. And uh, it's got a cylinder eight misfire intermittent, but it has a lot of mechanical noise on number eight cylinders. I sure did. Gotta ask if I got the strippers, Nipex. Pistol. You can't say the word pistol, Nipex. One-handed grip. Thank you, sir. I haven't used them yet. Be curious to know. I'm curious about their straight on this, if it's gonna be helpful. I was out on the uh, on the old rape van the other day, AKA the Snap-on truck, and I bought a pair of these. These are straight on wire strippers. Never seen, I call them a little hammerhead. Um, so, you know, you can come down in because sometimes it's not convenient to use a conventional pair. Like these, my favorite pair. Also came off the white truck. Uh, sometimes, let's say, you know, you're down in a hole and, you know, you can't get on. If this is a wire, we'll use this finger. You can't get in there like that, but you can come in like this and do it like that. So, I uh, just got these the other day. Conveniently, they have screw cutters on them. For whatever reason <laughs> snap on guy told him it's like oh look they got screw cutters i was kind of being a smart ass but then um and then he's like oh yeah that's great yeah it's, it's got two sides screw cutter use those all the time uh okay i was just being silly but yes i've used the screw cutter on my wire strippers but it is not something i typically look for because I can't tell you the last time I found an 832 screw or a 648 screw on a car that I needed, that was too long that I needed to strip. So in the automotive world, not real useful, but uh, perhaps in the carpentry world, I don't know. Anyhow, um, but in an automotive application, it's about as handy as, well, I won't say it, but you know. Uh, did I heard that ETCG had to find a new place? I did heard that. Um, I see his one video there where he said his building is being sold and that he has to uh, find a new place to rent or own or you know whatever uh, whatever the case is there. And that sucks because well because movement sucks, um, especially when you got to move your shop and you get used to your layout and how it is. Um, if it were me and I were him, I'd be looking for a place to purchase. But that's just me. 
it may not be in his budget or his future plans or you know what he whatever he thinks the future may hold for him so uh to each their own uh, i am glad that i that i own my place and i'm not under the constraint or the possible problems that he's facing because i can imagine that's frustrating uh to find out one day like hey uh yeah you're out of here in 30 days <laughs> that would stink so i do feel bad for him but uh he'll get through it he's a pretty mild-mannered uh calm guy at least on camera so who knows off camera it might be a raging lunatic but aren't we all <laughs> Anywho, uh, let's see. Brian Powers writes, I'm in Penyan. What would you charge to fluid film my 2005 Sierra half ton? I think for the pickup trucks, Brian, is 179 I get to do uh, fluid film. I believe it's about the same price that Crown charges. However, I am booked out to the middle of October, and I no longer do fluid film after October 1. So uh, probably catch you next year on that. Or uh, I would, if I was you, I would go to Crown. If I was in Penn Yen, uh, you're probably closer to Goodrich Auto Works of Bath, not a sponsor. They are a crown dealer. And in my opinion, they do a fantastic job because I have several customers that use them for crown. Uh, so I would highly recommend them uh, if you're in that area and you're looking for rust proofing, whether it be fluid film or crown, and you're closer to the bath area. Uh, Goodrich Auto Works of Bath. 776-7777, I think is your phone number. I only got the time to radio all the time. Uh, great body shop, huge, huge facility. Uh, but they do crown, so that's where I would go. Oh, let's pass one down and scroll it around here. Um, how do you remain so calm while tracking down a broken or pinched wire? Well, Mike, in the words of my wife, does pissing off, getting pissed off help any? Did that help any? No, it didn't. Um, once you know, once you've definitively determined that the wire is broken, uh, it's either, you know, opened or short. Let's say you're tracking down a broken wire, either for, you're tracking down a wire problem, either open, shorted, or corroded. The three types of problems you can have on a wire it doesn't you know getting pissed off isn't gonna isn't gonna help you uh, sometimes it's more frustrating to have bad service info so uh, for example let's say you know it's the red wire with the blue trace and you're looking on service info and you're like you know it doesn't show any connectors in between it shows it here the harness layout shows it here and you find like oh this isn't true like 90 percent of the friggin time that's frustrating uh but once you know what it is you know you just gotta keep calm and carry on you know what i mean uh do upper new yorkers really want to spit on lower new york uh, i don't know about that charlie i know they talk funny uh man's role in the universe i don't know yet james i don't know jeff wants to talk about nachos um, I don't have any comment on that. Gary says he wants to talk about shop updates, material availability, and how are the mechanics working out? Not sure how to answer that, Gary. Uh, material availability, we've covered a little bit ago. Hit the rewind. Be kind. Please rewind. And how are the mechanics working out? I got the same fellas here that have been here for years, so working out good. And shop updates, uh, just to kind of cover that, that was just physical appearance updates on the outside of the shop. Uh, so getting new siding, changing the color and overall appearance, you know, what's the shop look like? That was the big updates. Mrs. O got some updates in the uh, kitchen. I got my uh, guy who does our kitchen cupboards. He just built her another set and he's building a continuation of the uh, first installation of the countertop that he put in. So he built these, you know, custom countertops out of poplar and he came and took those back out and uh, epoxy poured uh, like a plastic coating over top. It's really fantastic. Super hard uh, coating. Um, I don't know what it is. It's like a, I don't know, Mrs. O knows. Uh, that's that's her business. So, and then he's doing a continue, you know, he's already put those tops back in, put the sink and everything back in, and then uh, building another custom top that covers the whole inside of her office area for the children's learning center. Uh, because with them being homeschooled and being here, 
we have, you know, we have to have some separation so they don't kill each other. And then also so they can be comfortable and, and learn. So, and so Mrs. O can help them throughout the day. But that's that. Um, Uh, my eyes going cray cray. Uh, Nick McKenzie, Mr. O, I have a problem. My 03 Crown Vic's been at shop for almost two months. Vehicle stalls while driving hard restart rich 02 bank one high fuel pressure help. I'm sorry, Nick. Just, I'm sorry, dude. That is not a lot of information short of seeing it. I mean, anything I say is just a guess. Um, you know, if it's running rich, I would these questions are very difficult to answer. If it was running rich, I would just find the source of why it's running rich. There are not many things that can make a car run rich. Um, you know, has it lost control of the fuel pump? You got excessive fuel pressure. Does it have the wrong injectors in it? Does it, uh, you know, is it speed density or is it a map engine? You know, are they reading correctly? Are it's coolant temp sensor reading correctly? Uh, you know, does it, does it maintain fuel pressure? Do you have injectors leaking down? Um, you know, there are so many things. There's not a lot that can make it run rich, but I would just look at the items that potentially could make it run rich. You know, is the purge stuck open? Is the, uh, you know, charcoal canister flooded? You know, there's certain items that are going to make the engine run rich. I would look at those things. Um, you know, are my O2 sensors, uh, you know, short of the ground and stuck lean? You know, at that point, I wouldn't think it'd go in a closed loop, but it's an extremely open-ended question. Um, you know, that has hundreds of possibilities and without, and, and no offense, you know, to you or anything, but without more information, which we wouldn't have, you know, the physical space here, <laughs> uh, to, uh, to plot out there. Um, it's very, very difficult to answer that question. Uh, I mean, I can give you the Scotty Kilmer answer and be like, oh, your return line's plugged up. Go home and unhook it and blow a cigar in it and you know, all your problems will be solved. That's that's the best I can do for you. I can blow smoke up your ass, but I can just be honest with you too. <laughs> I would find a new shop, I guess is the answer. If they can't fix uh, why your car runs rich in two months, then it's time to pick up and move on. Uh, would you hire someone who religiously studies all the top YouTube diagnosticians? Uh, I'm not in the business for hiring anybody right now, Pod, but um, I would rather hire somebody who had some experience um, or religiously studies all the top YouTube diagnosticians. I guess if they can apply what they study, it's not a bad thing. There is a lot of valuable information on the YouTube, especially with like the really good guys, like, you know, Ivan and Scanner Danner. I'm going to, I'm going to forget somebody. I hate naming YouTubers names. Uh, Keith over L1 Auto Diagnostics, all the guys on YouTube. Uh, excluding myself that are just great that are just really good uh, you know diagnostic guys yeah I mean there's there's a lot to be learned on there so don't uh, you know don't put anybody down that watches the YouTube to learn stuff there's a lot to be learned on there a lot of good stuff um, uh, let's see here anyways uh, let's see poor some. Oh, Gerald, man, he made, pour some sugar on me. Uh, is that, oh, gosh, Steven Tyler, is that Aerosmith? Pour some sugar on me. Yeah, he did a little song thing there. It's kind of funny. Talk about high school shop class. Rather not, Bill. Pour some sugar on me. That was Def Leppard. Def Leppard. Boom, coming up in the, gosh, I'm just sitting here thinking, like, wait a minute. My bad. My bad. Forgive me. You know what else I did? There's an upcoming video. I think it's coming out tomorrow or the next day on a uh, Ford Ranger. I made a reference to Hot for Teacher by Van Halen. And I believe, because I was telling something, I was saying something smart to Mrs. O about being my kid's school teacher, my wife, my secretary, and their lunch lady. And uh, was making kind of a reference to that and how lucky of a guy I am and telling her that my favorite song is Hot for Teacher. And I do believe that I said it's Hot for Teacher from CZ Top. So uh, you got the comment section is going to go crazy when I say that. But anyways, forgive me. 
the video. I don't even know what the video is about. Ford Ranger. Oh yeah, lots of torching. Uh, lots of torching and air hammering and big pry bars. It's good. It's going to be good. You guys are going to love it. Uh, let's see. What, uh, what else we got here? Okay, got to stop. Got to stop looking at that. It goes too fast and I can't keep up. Um, anyhow, let's see. Uh, this guy wants to talk about potato cannons. Uh, it must be he only wrote that because we've talked about that before and told you my experience with that. Um, uh, let's see. Hump day, pre-winter. Pre-winter, what do you do to prepare your vehicle? You know, that's a great question, uh, Gare Bear. And I have thought... Uh, about doing that as a topic like what is you know what do I do to prepare prepare uh, for winter which is not much however I could probably talk about what should be done to help prepare your vehicle for winter or some things that you should check like if you're going to shop let's say let's say you don't have the ability to check your car out yourself but you want to take your car into your local mechanic and you want to have a winter checkup done what can you do? You know, uh, I enjoy it when people come in with a list. Like, let's see, make sure this guy doesn't have his name on it. He does. Like, you know, a customer came in today uh, with his Prius, and he brings me a list. Like, this is what I want done. I want a full synthetic oil change. My TPMS light's on. I've had three original sensors. Please write down the hex ID codes for me. Got rattle and heat shields due to the corroded fasteners. Uh, you know, check suspension, rest the car, replace anything you think it will need to be fixed. I'll be back in February for inspection, you know. I like it when they come in with this. It's as good as a signed work order for me. I go down through it, boom, boom, boom. You know, we're in and out, we're done. I call them, here, you know, here's what we did. We're good to go. Uh, so I thought about that as a wintertime checkup because there are certain things that you should do as a car owner if you live in the, the Northeast where you actually have winter or in the Northern part of the Northern Hemisphere northern part of north america or anywhere north or far south of the equator i forgot we have a worldwide audience that stretches outside of a book in new york there are certain things that you can do as a car owner that you need to do uh, yourself and or to have with you in your car in the unlikely event of an emergency and then there are things that mechanically should be checked on your car that really you know, should be done prior to winter because if, you know, said component, you know, poops on you, like the battery, for example, or, you know, coolant's not such a thing nowadays, at least in my part of the world. Um, you know, if, if those certain things, you know, certain things need to be checked. So perhaps that will be in a video. Uh, let's see. New tool talk is always an enjoyable topic, says Adam. A new tool. Uh, I don't have, I do have some new, so I have one new prototype tool here. I don't know if I'm allowed to show yet, so I won't show it, but it's pretty neat. I'll give it that. Uh, not super everyday useful, but pretty neat. Uh, let's see. The long-awaited Fable SMA meetup. I don't know about that, Matt. That is a good question and good something to talk about. Um... I don't know where I would have a meetup because at this point it would probably hit the stupid level. Uh, not in a bad sense, but downtown Avoca here is a pretty sleepy little town. Uh, as a matter of fact, currently there are 3,255 people watching a live stream of the schmuck that lives here. That's double the amount of people that live here. So uh, let's take, for example, if we get... 10% of the people that are watching came. Let's say 300 people showed up in this town. You know, that's one-fourth the total population. There's no place to put those cars or the people, and I don't know what would happen to this town. So, um, I don't know how I logistically could orchestrate that unless I had it somewhere else other than here, but... Frankly, who wants to have a meetup if you can't come see the tiny little two-bay shop that I work in? <laughs> but uh, who knows? I don't know how many people would uh, how many people would come. 
Uh, I certainly would. I would be here. Uh, I've gone to Eric the Car Guy's meetup. Oh, yeah, we could all meet at Wilbert's. You pull in a bath and we could have a parts pulling competition. <laughs> but you got to pay for your own stuff. Or we could have it at the ice cream store. Ice cream's on you. Um, yeah, I don't know what uh, I don't know what would happen to this little town. The mayor would probably be mad at me. <laughs> um, there is a place just uptown. There's an old uh, runway for small aircraft, like you know, single engine prop Cessna type little things. I do know the people who own it and likely could have it there. However, I don't like that idea in case things got rowdy and somebody got stupid and there was some kind of property damage, uh, something like that. I don't want to have to be responsible for somebody else's actions. Pretty short-tempered, pretty short-fused. So if something like that were to happen, it could get stupid real quick. So anyhow, I hate to have it on somebody else's, uh, somebody else's property uh, that, that I knew, you know. Anyhow, so I don't know, I guess long story short, I don't know logistically how I would work it out. Going to Eric the Car Guy's uh, meetup, I see it appears to be quite stressful for him uh, and to uh, the patrons that come because everybody wants to see the guy. And some people travel a long ways and they, you know, they want to see him, shake his hand, take his picture. And it's a lot, man. It looked like to me it was a long day for that fella. And at the end of the day, I'm like, wow, I'm glad I'm not Eric the Car Guy <laughs> because that's a lot. You know, he's got to clean his shop and just, like I said, the whole logistics of it all. And I see he doesn't do it anymore, so I don't. I don't know, um, and I don't remember why. He, he may have put that in his newsletter at some point, why he doesn't uh, do it. Uh, perhaps that is because of the logistics, so. But anyways. Uh, let's see, yeah, the Walmart parking lot. <laughs> That's where we could go. Down at the Walmart. Uh, let's see. This guy wants a toolbox tour, and I just don't get it. But when I get desperate enough, and I am completely out of videos, and there is no more material to be made. Perhaps at that point, we can do a toolbox tour where we just open drawers and look at the tools. Um, the highly popular videos on the YouTube. I don't know why, however they are. Daniel wants to speak about ice cream. Well, what more is there to say? Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. This guy wants to talk how New York sucks as a fellow New Yorker. Well, Brian, we don't have that kind of time. Lack of quality control. Let's see. Advice for people entering the field later in life. My advice for you, Johnny, would be run for your life. Uh, Napa not sponsoring us, which I'm glad they don't. Uh, Chris, we would never let Napa sponsor us. I mean, unless they came in with an offer, I can't refuse. However, I'm not going to sit here and look you guys in the face, eyeball to eyeball, mano y mano, and tell you that Napa is the best thing since sliced bread. Uh, because frankly, they're not. Uh, and nobody is. I mean, there is, there's problems in every, every business. My business, your business, their business, you know, Napa, Rock Auto, it doesn't matter. It's all the same crap with a different, different logo on the building. So, I don't know, can I say Napa's? Napa is, is crap. I'm a Napa Auto Care Center for crying out loud. I like Napa. They're my first call. But I couldn't accept a sponsorship from them because then if something crappy happened, they did something crappy, then I couldn't say, hey, this was crappy. And we couldn't call them crap or say Napa. That means never any parts available. That's the acronym. Or maybe it's National Auto Part Association. I don't know. But I love Napa. Some days I don't. Most of the days I do. So that's that. Oh, there was a guy there. Mr. O, Toodaloo in Missouri. Hey, it's Richard. Richard. Thanks for the plate, buddy. My wife will love that. Um, Mrs. O is a health update. She's doing great, Tony. Um, yeah, she's doing fantastic, actually. She's doing much better since her... I would better let her speak on that subject, though. Uh, let's see. Torque vectoring all-wheel drive or not. Oh, crap. Where did my... 
Um, something just happened here, folks. Bear with me. I'm a rookie. Where the where in the thunder did it go? Oh, we're way down here. Oh, torque vectoring all-wheel drive and not. I'm not. You got to ask about that, Carl. Uh, torque vectoring all-wheel drive. I think that's a Toyota thing where they send more power to the uh, front and rear. Isn't it like a 50-50 split with torque vectoring versus like your average 25-75 split of a normal all-wheel drive? Uh, I don't know. So I'm not your guy to ask about that. I don't keep up much with uh, car technology and uh, the new things coming out. It's particularly the brand new stuff coming out because frankly, I'm not gonna see it for another six years. Not that it's invaluable information to know. Oh, torque vectoring is Honda. See, I thought it was Toyota. I thought Toyota was doing it. Isn't it the split of the all-wheel drive system of more of a 50-50 balance split? I, I could say, I don't even know. You know, I, I'll read articles and stuff about it, but I don't commit it to memory because Because let's think about it like this. So your car comes in, let's say I work on a hundred cars that have torque vectoring all wheel drive. And I work on a hundred cars that don't have torque vectoring that have just standard all wheel drive. As a mechanic, it makes no difference to me what type of all wheel drive it has. Perhaps as a consumer, it would make a difference to you, but uh, typically, if it comes in and the all-wheel drive is broke, broke is broke. You know, is the power transfer unit out of it, or the clutches out of it, whatever balancing system it has for the all-wheel drive, we can look at that as an individual component. How the software applies the uh, rear differential or the typical non-drive wheels, I really don't care. Um, that's more consumer end. You bought it for this reason. You, you bought the Subaru because it has X drive. You know, you bought this. Uh, you know, Nisimo edition because it's got push button lockers. You know, that's more consumer stuff. As a mechanic, eh, I really don't care. It's a car and it's broken, you fix it and you know, you move on with life. Um, you know, I don't care if it has Apple iPlay or Android Auto. You know, you know what I'm saying? I hope, I hope that makes sense to you. Um, so anyways, that could be a kind of a ignorant thing, but who's Kevin? Everybody's saying hi, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> I don't know, Kevin. Did I miss somebody, Kevin? A lot of people love Kevin. I want to. I love Kevin. I love Kevin. Oh, can I please say hi, Kevin? He's my dad. And he's a big, big fan, and that is from Dawson. What's up, Kevin? K Dog. <laughs> he likes to be calling. I knew he did. Known him for a long time. Uh, Steve's uh, first rifle was a 243. What was mine? Mine was a Remington 270 uh, on a 700 action. I still have it um, in 270 Winchester. So I still have it. That was my first, well, besides a 22 long rifle, which my first one was a Marlin 880SQ heavy barrel, custom stock. No, that wasn't my first one. Maybe a Marlin 25MN, which I think was 22 man. I don't know. I've, my first hunting rifle, legitimate deer hunting rifle, was a Remington 700 action in Cambridge 270 Winchester. So, anyways, for what that's worth. <sighs> What's the latest model I worked on? Uh, yesterday I worked on a car with 258 miles on it. Didn't work on it, but I sprayed it with the juice. Uh, brand new 2021 Toyota Tundra. Uh, one of my customers just bought it and came down here to me. Psh, psh, Watch Wes work. I'll be dipped. There's that guy. He, folks, you got to check out Watch Wes work if you haven't already. Here's for the ice cream fund. Anything I should look for on a used alignment machine? Looking at Hunter because I like my Hunter service guy. I've never used any kind of alignment machine, so I don't know what features I should look for. Oh, that's a great question, Wes. And I love watching this guy work. His humor is great because he's one of those guys that'll tell you like a dirty joke, but keep a straight face. And that's what I like about him because he's just that kind of guy. And that's what I like because he's the kind of guy you got to be worried about. 
That's why I like him. He's mysterious. Um, boy, Wes, I would like to discuss this with you at length, uh, if I could, uh, because I have some questions. And it's good that you like your hunter service guy. Uh, I like my Hoffman guy, who is also my hunter guy, who is also the John Bean guy and also the Snappin guy and also the Robin Air guy. He kind of does everything. Um, if I could, Wes, I would like to talk to you about this. Uh, you know how to get my email. If you don't, I will send you an email to get your information because I would be more than willing to discuss this with you as a fellow Mechanic YouTuber. Write down www. Watch West Word email. Uh, shoot me an email with your info, Wes, and uh, we can talk about it. I did some pretty extensive researching when I bought my alignment machine. Uh, and I learned a lot, and there's a lot to learn. And if your hunter guy is quite honest with you, he should be able to fill in a lot of the blanks also. Um, looking at a used machine, though. Um, I do have some input on that. And without just boring everybody to death, we can talk about that personally. Plus, I wanted to ask you some other questions. I knew this day would come, Wes. The day when we exchange phone numbers and we laugh and talk, and make jokes. I love that guy. Uh, he works on rusty crap just like me. If you guys uh, don't know Watch Wes work, click on his thing or just go on the Google and Google say, hey, Google. Take me to watch Wes work and play the classic rock station on iHeartRadio. I don't know which one she'll do, um, but something will happen uh, when you do that. But uh, great guy. No, we don't have a bromance going, Mopar Scott. Maybe we do. I, we, I do watch him a little bit on the YouTube. <laughs> uh, we're not going to spoon Besides, he's too big to be Little Spoon, and I'm never Little Spoon. Uh, well, uh, is, there's, is there someone? At the, there's no one at the garage window. You jerks, you can't see anything. It's a reflection. But you made me look. Is there really somebody? There's nobody waving back there. I'm looking at it right now. No, there's not. Oh, is there? Oh, there is. Look at that. Oh, he was. <laughs> Look at this guy. I thought they were messing with me. Oh, they can see me? Yeah. Yeah, they just told me. They said there's somebody looking through the window. Sorry. That's all right. It's all right. What's up, Wednesday? What's up, Wednesday, man? I heard the yell from across the street, but I knew I had to do it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right, I'll watch you later. All right, there you go, man. See you back. See ya. I'll be damned. You guys are right. Uh, <laughs> funny story. Uh, <laughs> it's a fellow that was just here. We'll call him Mr. G. Uh, Greg for short. He, uh, Good guy. He yelled at me across the street today. <laughs> He's like, what's up Wednesday? And I'm like, yeah. And then I thought, hey, today could do what's up Wednesday. It is Wednesday. A uh, local fella, he's out for a walk. And uh, says he stops by and sees me, tells me he loves the channel. Blew my mind. Uh, and here's why. When I was a young buck, I used to get in lots of trouble from the police. And, uh, he used to be the police. Uh, he's a trooper. I won't say where or how or when, but however, we've had some interactions throughout my youth. I've matured and grown up since then and uh, know him now. And uh, anyways, <laughs> so that's that. So he just stopped by. He didn't know that you guys could see us <laughs> looking through the window. So it's kind of funny. Anyways, he probably did. But uh, there's that. Luna, he's my cat. Come here, kitty. Well, must be Luna's a little camera. 
very shy today. She doesn't want to come on. She's hiding under the tundra. I can hear her little jingle bell. She's kind of a night owl. She tries to get out at nighttime, so I usually let her out. Mrs. O doesn't like her run around the shop because she gets so dirty. But yeah, I call her Luna Tick. <laughs> yeah, that's good that you come up with that, Jack. But that's the same thing I call her. But anyhow, I think we've made it all the way through where we needed to make it through. We made it all the way through uh, the questions on the Facebook. Let me resort them here. Uh, let's see, we'll go newest. Most dependable car. Is there such a thing, Perry? Um, I don't know. <laughs> There's, they're all junk, dude. That's, that's what it comes down to. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, let's see. Ryan Jackson writes tips on secondary air systems, Chevy Cobalt pump done, one check valve done. I still have the money light. Uh, in that case, Ryan, I would probably unplug the ports in the head that are likely plugged up. If it is the 1.8 liter Chevrolet, I've done several of those. Um, but uh, yeah. That that would be my that would be my thought. However, um, oh, did, did no? I saw I saw I saw Wes. Yeah, the big one point eight. So yeah, I believe those have a tendency to plug up the uh, air injection ports. So your air injection reactor, I think they call it. Uh, the ports in the head tend to uh, plug up on those. So uh, let's see. Steven says Stephen the Wolfman. Ow, ow, ow. That's how you shout out a guy with the last name Wolf. Uh, Mrs. O is gorgeous, almost as pretty as my wife. I would challenge you on that, Stephen. I bet she is better looking. My wife, that is. Uh, love the channel. Best mechanic ever. P.S. I'm in North Carolina, but have family in Gloversville. Uh, anyhow, thanks, Stephen. Wolfman. I would totally call you Wolfman. I would hire a guy just because he had the last name Wolf. <laughs> Uh, if, if he would let me call him Wolfman, I got to get back to watch Wes work here. Let's see. I got to do one thing. Oh, I can put him in timeout. Um, crap holy. Sorry. Bear with me here, folks. Okay. We're back in business. Um, so that's it. Yeah. I think we're done on the, uh, on the Facebook the coffee is catching up with my brain, as you can see, because it makes me lose my train of thought and uh, makes me become unfocused. I don't like drinking tons of coffee during the day because it's exactly what happens. I don't know if you guys notice that or if you have enough self-awareness to notice that, but I do if I am not hydrated or if I drink. Uh, let's say we, you know, so I wake up, I eat the same thing for breakfast most every day which includes, now I'll give you a fun fact here, uh, Cheerios, uh, two ounces. So it's gonna be about two cups of uh, Cheerios, which is a lot. And then, don't get down on me, almond milk. Mrs. O buys this vanilla almond milk, which is fantastic on cereal. Don't drink it or use it any other time other than on cereal, which I love it. It's great. And I don't even know how they milk an almond because I've looked at a lot of almonds and I'm I imagine it's gotta be a small little machine to milk those suckers. With two tablespoons of local raw honey, and then usually a uh, fruit of some sort, either you know half a banana, um, uh, blueberries, strawberries, stuff like that too. So anyways, that's what I eat for breakfast. And I have noticed, maybe you haven't, but this time of year, the time of the ragweed, the time that when the goldenrod turns golden, there is some allergen that is in the air that is not Rona that messes me up. I'm talking eyes shut, can't breathe, drooling down your face, eating Benadryl like M&Ms. However, if for several months prior to the late September attack, I call it, if I do two tablespoons of local honey, I do not get allergies like none. 
and it is amazing. So I have experimented this with for several years. I have tried it, and I've put myself through agony to make sure, I don't know if almonds have nipples or not, but they must be because they milk them, um, where I will do it one year, and then skip a year, and then do it another year, and you will go through a time of no allergies. Like, I mean, like, oh wow, September, October, I'm not sneezing and I can breathe, to the next year, like, nope, no honey, not, not your tea, not your cereal, and you, it destroys me. And it, it's, it's only about a two week period, but it is amazing. It, because Mrs. Owens, she, let's face it, she's a hippie. And she's always like, oh, natural, organic, do this, do that, you know? Like, you gotta stretch, you gotta eat honey, you gotta, you know, drink this tea, and blah, blah, blah. Well, of course I don't listen to her, why? Because I'm a man, and we make up our own mind, and we don't listen to our wives. But I decided to try it, and give her the benefit of the doubt, because what's, you know, I, I like honey, we got several local beehives, so it's easy to get. She gets the big jumbo jar, like I say, two tablespoons of that on my cereal, and I have no allergies, and it's amazing. And I'm just like, how in the hell does this work? You know, a bee eats it, it pukes it out, we eat it back up, it works. And I'm not one to sit here and promote, like it works for me, your body, your choice, you try it, let me know if you have bad allergies. Now it is not something that you're like, oh, I got the sniffles, glug, I ate some honey. Oh, I still got the sniffles. You're gonna have to do some research on it. You're gonna have to look and see because I believe it has to be locally sourced honey from where you live. I don't know that for a fact, but that's what I'm told. And I will testify, testify can I get an amen, that it works and it works for me. And it's not a coincidence because like I say, I've tried it and then you know, not tried it, and then tried it, and then not tried it, and be like, okay, when I don't do it, I can't breathe, and then when I do do it, I can breathe. So, if you like breathing, eat honey. If you don't, don't. Or if you just, just Google search it. But I find when you Google search stuff, you gotta take it with a grain of salt, because there's other people like, oh, if you eat honey, you'll get botulism and you'll die. Wyatt says it works. Wyatt one able right there. He eats local honey, and it works for him as well, too. So, there you go. It works, people. Um, I don't know why we're talking about that. And then every time I do that, and, and I tell myself, like, man, I feel freaking great. It's not sex and honey, it's sex and candy. Who sings it? I smell sex and candy. Drawing a blank. If I didn't eat the freaking sugar, I think that's what we were talking about. Caffeine and sugar. So, for example, if I have coffee in the morning. Yes, Marcy's Playground, thank you. <laughs> um, if I have, no, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. It's like some candy, Marcy's Playground. Marcy's Playground. Um, if I have sugar, an excessive amount, more than a cup of coffee. It makes my brain just shut down. I will be irritable. I won't have, you know, clarity of thought. Um, I'll find that I get distracted very easily. When I'm working, I just, I, I won't be able to, uh, you know, just take any, any background noise. Like, I don't know, I just, it just doesn't work well with me. Even though my mind is saying, you need more coffee. You need more caffeine, get Red Bull. Uh, you know, go grab a, a Coke and, you know, this and that. And then the more you do, like, the worse you get. And then all of a sudden you get really sleepy. And then now you're just sleepy and angry. But I don't even know where I was going with this simply because I've ate two Stroop waffles and drank a cup of caffeinated coffee. What did you expect? Happens every time. Anyways, <laughs> don't get your honey from a hornet's nest. Uh, I should drink bang. Oh my gosh, no. No, I know sugar is bad. Uh, sugar is bad for you, and I have seen the effects it takes on me. Uh, as a matter of fact, there, I've lost 20 pounds simply by changing uh, diet and not going to like some awful, like, ugh, you know, this is disgusting. Uh, but simply changing diet went from 211 pounds and back to 191, and that's where I've currently been maintaining because that's my. 
ideal weight, even though it is still technically obese, um, according to my doctor. He doesn't tell me that, but I see the chart. <laughs> Uh, Chris N says, I recently purchased a RAV4 Prime plug-in hybrid, live in central New York. I would like to lube pins and clean the caliper brackets annually. Do I need a scan tool to service rear brakes on a Toyota hybrid with rear electric brakes? Boy, uh, Chris, I don't know the answer to that. Typically, if I have something come in that has uh, electronic parking brakes on it, there is always a process. Uh, there is always a process whether it has to be done uh, with a scan tool or if it can be done on board with the car system with a certain, you know, pat your belly, rub your head, hold the window, turn the key on uh, type thing. That I don't know. So what I would recommend to you is I put out a video. If you just go on my channel, you click the, oh, you know, this icon, the magnifying glass icon where you can search things, type in wiring diagrams. I talk about where to get factory service info. If and it were me and I were you, I would, if, if I didn't know that, I would purchase the service info that I could look at directly from Toyota, which is attainable by anybody. You don't have to be a shop. You can go in and get a short-term subscription or buy the manual. Um, I don't know, check this comment section. Um, people will put stuff in the comment section. I don't know right offhand because I have not done those. So I would refer to you to the service manual. That's going to tell you. Does it need to be done with a scan tool or does it need to be done with the onboard system of the car? So, but uh, you might need one of those big fancy scan tools. Oh, she still doesn't want to come by. She's just going over there. Gotta go do some cat scans, I guess. Uh, anyhow. Sorry, I can't answer your questions very well, Chris, uh, but that would be my suggestion. Holding this like a microphone so I can answer things better. Uh, from a noob at streaming and YouTube who, wrenches in a, who wrenched in his youth, missed the grease, but not the aches and pains. Thank you for my fix and some garage time. Here's a bit of the ice cream fun. Well, you're welcome, old grizzly gamer. And uh, thanks for hanging around. Uh, Bobby says, can you please say hi to my wife, Elizabeth, and let her know that brake clean is perfectly fine to remove her fake nails? Uh, yes, you can, Elizabeth. I am not a doctor, uh, nor endorsed by any brake clean or uh, fake nail people. However, if it was me, I would use it. I think it's simply acetone, which is the same main ingredient that you stick your digits in when you're getting the paint off them. I know when Mrs. O does hers, she uses a grinder. So let's see, grinder or brake clean? Um, I do believe the brake cleaner is a carcinogen, so I can't therefore recommend that you stick your fingers in it. However, if it was me and I had to get my fake nails off, that's probably what I would do. But I don't recommend it. Anyhow, Elizabeth, nice talking to you. And don't listen to Bobby, he doesn't know what he's saying. He may, though. Uh, Scott, he's a fellow shop owner. He says, buy a new 10 millimeter socket. Great channel. I already did, Scott. And I keep them in a little package. There they are, right there. A whole package of 10 millimeters. Just lost them all. Right in my coffee. Every freaking one of them in my coffee. You see it live here, folks. That's how it works. Uh, people are like, oh. If it's iron, it's magnetic. No, fact of the matter is if it's iron and it has threads on it or a, an opening that you can stick a socket or you need it, it's drawn to liquid. If I had antifreeze over here, dropped them over here, that's where they'd land. Because that's how, that's how it works. At least they all didn't hit the floor. Let's dry them off on my hanky here. Stick them back in the package. Oh man, they're full of coffee. Now they're gonna be sticky. That's all right. <sighs> Where do you get this kind of entertainment, folks? Uh, only live on the YouTube. No, that's what I was trying to show you. The Astro 410. <laughs> Anywho. Oh, I did get a new ratchet. A couple new ratchets. Got this little guy from the Astro Tools. 
Uh, I don't know if it's out in production yet. Does it have their name on it? Oh gosh, I probably shouldn't show it. Let's forget we ever seen any of this. Let's uh, replace it with one that you can see. You see what I see. How long is it, Eric? Oh, huge, lady. New from Snap-on. Not new. Get you the part number in case you need it. Save your giggles, folks. Yes, I've got these now. It is a FLL, so a Foxtrot Lima Lima 8-0. Made in USA. She's straight. She's long. I like it. It's as long as my Mac flexi head, the only Mac ratchet that I own because all Mac ratchets are junk, except for this one. This thing holds up extremely well. Uh, oftentimes I wish it was rigid so the tip didn't bend over. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> so uh, I bought one off the Snap-on truck. Probably paid way too much for it, but I don't know. I go on and get the stuff and I say, hey, go give Mrs. O the bill. And he goes in and surprise. Uh, it's the 607 angling. Wow, that's, that's where we're from. Um, been watching for years. I managed a small shop in Corning near you. Learned a ton from you. Thanks for your help along the way. Well, thanks a lot, 607 angling. Um, I'd be interested in where your shop is. We're pretty close to the Corning and we're up there often. That way we go up there and eat. Some of mine and Mrs. O's favorite places to eat are around that area. Uh, George. He says that we showed a set of brakes on a half ton once that had worn to the caliper pistons. How could this be possible with your state inspection program requirements? Well, George, let me enlighten you a little bit on state inspections. I'm going to show you a little trick. You just stand by. We'll come back to that, George. You mind me to tell you about the inspections? Uh, let's see. Thanks for the video on the CB Jeep Pilot video. Because of your video, I was able to perform this. I prefer DIY. I do have a nice hump in my Harbor Freight press as I missed a sir clip. That's fantastic, Darren. Check out the torque test channel. They're doing a torture test on ball joint C presses and uh, you'll like it. Thank you, Steve. Andrew, does Mrs. O ever make lunch for the boys in the shop like she does for you or is she really making lunch for you, for the boys and not you? She only makes lunch for me. However, she would not be uh, she wouldn't deny any of them lunch if they asked for lunch. And sometimes she makes lunch. She'll offer them lunch. Like, hey, do you boys want some of this too? I made extra. You know, she like if she makes stew or something uh, where there is plenty to share. But let's be honest. You know, I'm with my boys all day. And sometimes they want to leave. You know, do you want to hang out with your boss all day? You know, like my boy Josh, he likes to take a nap at lunchtime. You know, I give them an hour off. We pay them for their lunch. And uh, sometimes they'll take a nap or want to go out and make some phone calls, you know, whatever. You know, they do whatever they want, but uh, typically they don't hang out with their boss. Now, let me show you. Let me show you its features. <laughs> Who loves the Slingshot channel? This guy does right here. Um, I'll tell you that much. What the, There's something going on here, folks, um, with the old uh, chats here. Um, Apologize if I've missed any. Uh, I put uh, puts the lotion on his skin or else it gets the hose again. Sorry, break clean fumes. <laughs> uh, anyhow, uh, let's see. Who is somebody was asking us about the uh, state inspection? I think it was a guy whose name was George. And there's a handy little thing you can do uh, to always pass state inspection, George. <laughs> and I seen this on the uh, on the Facebook, and the guy's like, "How could they have missed that for inspection?" Well, George, you're about to learn a very valuable lesson. Because I work for a lot of shops that uh, a lot of things pass inspection. And I do send some customers there that I know will not pass a legal New York State inspection. There are plenty of places to go nearby with this very simple trick will allow you to pass state inspection. Now, when your inspector comes out and he looks like this and he says, yeah, I, uh, I don't see anything wrong with this car. Uh, it should pass inspection just fine. <laughs> I'll meet you up front. That's how you pass state inspection without legally passing state inspection. You need a special pair of these glasses. Um, 
that allows the inspector to perhaps not see your brakes, but that's one way to get by the New York State inspection system right there. And as you will notice, uh, now $10 is not gonna do it. Obviously you replace it. You gotta have at least a $50 pair of glasses. And um, that will allow you to pass the New York State inspection. Just FYI, I, that's what I've heard. It does not work here. Uh, I don't do lick them and stick them. Why? Because, and I'll tell you why. So the guy comes in and he says, oh, Eric, oh, you know, hey man, just forget about it, forget about it, you know? I don't need that parking brake. You know, he says stuff like that. And you're like, oh man, you know, he gives you this big sob BS story saying like, oh, you know, I'm gonna fix it when I get home, whatever. You know, he's got some story, sob story, you know, I got the money, whatever. Um, and it may sound good at that point, and you may have some sympathy at that point for that person. Uh, let me see. There you go, give Wes the blue hammer. Um, that person at that point, you may feel sympathetic for and perhaps somewhat relatable with. However, in the event that something happens, let's say, you know, they're driving along, the piece of crap that you just put a sticker on, boom, they slam in the ass end of somebody, whatever, wreck the car, put it in the guardrails, somebody dies. This thing gets DOT inspected. And they look at the sticker, the cop does, and says, oh, well, this one's got a brand new sticker. Where did this come from? How did this thing pass? It's got compression fittings on the brake lines. It's got no parking brakes. You know, it's got broken coil springs. You know, there's obvious infractions with this. There's bald tires, this and that. Look at the back of the sticker. Gosh, this thing just got inspected 100 miles ago. Guess what? That guy who came in to give you some sob story, he just picked you up, he threw you under the bus, he dropped it in reverse, thunk, thunk, he back. We're still going? I think we're still going. What were we just talking about? You guys, are we still good? What's up, everybody? <laughs> um, okay, we're good. That was weird. Uh, so after he backs the bus over top of you, he puts it back in first gear. He drives it back over top of you. Then he throws a rope out of the back of the bus, and he continues to drag you down the road. And what did you do? You made 20 bucks on an inspection. Big deal. I'd do a little hand motion if my daughter wasn't here right now about what I think about that. And that's the way it is. I don't care if that guy mother Fs you all the way out the door to every shop in town because you failed him for inspection. The fact of the matter is it is not worth me losing my business because you drive a piece of sh And that's just the matter of fact, folks. And I don't mean to sound like a prick, my voice just squeaked there a little bit. I've already gone through puberty, but it squeaked. But that's just a matter of fact. Folks, if I lose my inspection license in New York State, I will never get it back. Do I make money on state inspections? Absolutely not. If I bring a car in and I take the half hour that it takes to inspect it, and I run it through and I pass it and do everything that I do, I lose about 40 some dollars in that hour. But you do make money inadvertently, or you do make money by bringing them in. And let's say you bring it in and it needs brakes and the customer elects to have you do the brakes. Now, you know, you've made money on it. The inspection didn't make you money, but the infraction did. Um, I, I don't care if the state does them or not, but that's just, that is the reason why I don't do lick them and stick them. Lost a lot of friends and I've pissed a lot of people off. But it is not my rule. This is the state law. If you don't like it, call the state and turn me in. That's why I tell people, here's the phone number, here's the law. You tell them that I failed your vehicle because you had a broken windshield and no seat belt on one side and the mirror's busted and you got no working lights on the back. Turn me in. Have a nice day. That's just how it works, dude. So, that's that.
That's that and a bag of chips. Whew. So, and, and I, like I say, I know that pissed a lot of people off. But with all of that being said, I know about three local shops within about 10 miles that will give you some, some lick'em stick'ems. So, <laughs> anyhow, that's that. So if you need one, like I say, I've sent many, you know, many customers there because, um, because that's how it works. <laughs> can you inspect your own cars? Absolutely. Yep, you can. You can inspect your own cars. Um, Matthews, yes, Scott Hoyt. <laughs> the last time I touched a Hoyt, I had to go wash my hands. Uh, I'd rather shoot a PSE. Um, but anyways. Let's see. Oh, Big Clive is up in here. Oh, hello, friends. <laughs> I love that guy. He's the only guy. I love that guy. Never know what he's talking about because he talks about stuff that's way too technical for me. But I still watch and pretend that I know what's going on. But uh, anyways. Yep. Oh, there he is. There's Big Clive from the Isle of Man. In the UK, we have a yearly test requirement, but none on the Isle of Man. <laughs> what a fantastic place to live, Clive. The Isle of Man. Stone says that Bowtech is the only way. I would shoot Bowtech Stone, and before I bought my Matthews Atlas, I got rid of my whatever I was shooting before, <laughs> my Burdick, and uh, bought an Atlas, I did heavily look at Bowtech. I love their cam tuning system. However, let's be honest, once we tune cam timing and cam lean on our bows, we don't ever really touch it. Now, does Bowtech have a better system of moving the cams? Absolutely. Matthews gives you, what, three options with top hat, you know, cam design systems? Yeah. Can you get your center shot perfect? You betcha. Do you ever touch it again? I don't. Uh, you know, once I paper tune, walk back tune, get my rest, dead on, we're done. We're moving on. And we just shoot, we shoot our little hearts out. <laughs> so, but I do appreciate their tuning system. Um, anyways. Uh, this guy smells fishy. <laughs> A blind man walks by a fish market and... Ah, good morning, ladies. What's that from? That's from the Afro Man CD. Why do I know that? Why did I just say that out loud? He's got an 08 F-150 with a big 4.2 liter manual transmission. Do I have a ballpark on what he should expect to pay for a new transmission? I don't smell fishy. Um, <laughs> what a great name. Not really. Um, I don't have a ballpark. I... Gosh, I couldn't tell you the last time I bought a manual transmission. Um, so I don't know. And I don't know if you're looking at used or new. You know, used, I might think it's maybe like a $600 transmission. Um, I don't know, to be right off, to be honest with you. Uh, if it's, was it two-wheel peeler, was it? You know, transmission. I don't know if it's two-wheel drive. If it's two-wheel drive, you might be looking at like maybe four and a half, five hours to replace it. Four-wheel drive, maybe six to eight. Depends on if you live in the rust belt. Uh, most manual transmissions I would repair as opposed to replace, uh, depending on what the failure was, whether it was catastrophic or if you're just looking, you know, you know, bad synchro or, you know, whining bearings or something like that. I would typically fix those. But uh, anyways, uh, where are we at here? Oops. Uh, Zach says, what kind of rear main seal puller do you have? Do you like or what do I like to use? Sheet metal screw and a slide hammer, the kind that slips between the OD of the crank and the seal ID and yanks on it. Um, the kind that looks like a hunk or like, like a hook. Ah, uh, boy, that's a great question, Zach. And honestly, you, at least in my uh, little tiny part of the world, is we don't do a lot of rear main seals. You don't see a lot of vehicles come in and you're like, that's leaking out the rear main seal. We get a lot of vehicles in that are misdiagnosed as rear main seals. Uh, first two that I can think of right offhand are Kias uh, with the big 3.8 liter, the oil pressure switch under the intake leaks and conveniently drips right out of the rear main seal uh, PP hole. 
And the other one I can think of are the Chrysler 3.6 liters uh, that come in that are rear main seal. And again, that's the engine oil cooler in the intake valley that leaks and conveniently PPs right out the flywheel. Uh, that is uh, one that I can think of, you know, right, right off hand. But to answer your question, if I had to replace a rear main seal, yes, I, there is a couple that different types of seal pullers that I like. One of them being, as you mentioned, your classic screwy in the slide hammer. So screw, slide hammer, usually works somewhat okay. It works 50% of the time, every time. Um, you got your classic hook job slash crankshaft destroyer. So be careful. You nick the crankshaft, she's going to leak. Uh, used to have a pin. Used to be straight. I welded it. Probably used it uh, too hard. And then, one of my faves is this little guy. Uh, it's got the extra blade up here. This allows you to go in, get under that lip, clean that lip, get up on there, pull the seal out. This is a pretty good seal puller. I do rather enjoy this one, uh, or I'm rather fond of this one. I probably have other types of seal pullers in here. However, the most classic, the most used seal puller to date requires opening two drawers. One, to get this out, that apparatus right there, and then this apparatus right here. I'll give you half a second to guess what they are. That's correct. The classic seal puller. Tappy tap tap tap. Use your screwdriver. You smash it all the bits. Don't hit the crank. Once you get her beat in a little bit, get in there and pop goes the weasel. So you flip your handle, put it in there, put your screwdriver back. Don't slam my drawers, please. I tell Josh every day. Josh, I've been telling you for six years, don't slam my drawers. What's he do? Slams my drawers. Um, uh, let's see. Smells fishy. He writes back. Uh, thanks, it's two-wheel, and I'm planning on getting it rebuilt, but haven't heard back from my local shops. I'm far from here, rust area. Idaho, yes. Idaho. <laughs> Idaho. <laughs> Idaho. Idaho. Why do we say that? Why do you guys make me say things? Uh, Georgia boy, 9009er. Love videos. You made me a better mechanic and saved my butt. Two T's. A few times for making the wrong diagnosis. Well, that's good, Georgia. 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 Georgia boy. Uh, I'm glad that I've helped enhance your diagnostic skills. Um... Oh, I see. Okay, Clive's talking to another fella. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess uh, I guess that's it, folks. We've been on. There is still three thousand people. Is there three thousand people with nothing to do at eight thirty p.m. Eastern time? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's kind of what I was wondering. Um, and hence, that's uh, because they love me. It says. Six, oh yeah, I guess over on the uh, western side of the United States, um, it's not too late. Clive said this morning he gets on his streams, but you have such a soothing voice, Clive. I'll be honest with you, sometimes I watch that and I just, I start to nod and Clive starts saying stuff. He has such a, who agrees? Everybody hands up if you agree that uh, Big Clive has a very soothing voice. I even make my wife listen to you. So I'm like, listen to this man's voice and then look at his beard. And uh, so anyhow, fun fact for you. Uh, Confidential uh, has a Buick 04, 15 volt startup and highway, new alternator, voltage drop shifting into gear, dim, same voltage, output signal to DRL is one volt lower. 15 volts startup and highway. So I'm assuming he's stating that it potentially is overcharging. Voltage drop shifting into gear. I I guess I'm not sure confidential what um, 
you know, what you're saying. Um, I don't know if 15 volt on that is too high. Yeah, I know a lot of, I know that's old, but a lot of modern vehicles, you know, you'll see them charging at 15.1, 15.2. Uh, I would be questioning uh, my battery, how good my battery was at that point. I don't know what you mean that your voltage dropped at shifting into gear. I, there's a lot of questions I would have uh, to have to ask to see, you know, see where you're at with that. But, and, you know, I wish I just can't help you much more than that. Sorry. Uh, nothing to do with this. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Uh, would I recommend crown rust proofing on a vehicle that had dealer applied rust proofing? Done at the purchase, bought used, one-year-old truck, and the original owner bought the application at purchase. Quote, unquote, the application. Well, Devin, I would. I would still recommend um, having it crown rust-proof, even if you had the nasty black asphalt, going to rot my vehicle in half, undercoating uh, put on it. I believe the crown will wick its way uh, behind it. And I think you will find eventually, as I found yesterday, uh, fluid filming a 2005 Chevrolet for the third year in a row, which originally had the rot out spray can, uh, what the hell is it, Z-Bart uh, put on it from new, which essentially destroyed this guy's truck. So I've been doing it with fluid film in effort to let it wick behind it, push all that garbage off and get us back down to the rusty rotted metal. And it did. I took, I wish I should have recorded this. So this third year application, I've been noticing it loosening up all the black asphalt undercoating. Of course, you know, the rust is pushing it off too. Um, yes, it was applied new and so on and so forth. However, I went at it with a blow nozzle and filled three five gallon buckets. It took almost all of the black asphalt coating off, which was fantastic. It softened it and got all that crap off there. So hopefully it can keep it uh, from rotting out more. I do think if you go ask Crown, they probably would agree. And it's the same thing with that crappy coating they put on the brand new frames of the Chevrolets, that waxy, you know, I don't know, that black coating crap they put on there that falls off in the first year. You'll notice when you crown them or fruit fill them, it'll push all that stuff off, you know, thereby letting the actual better product, you know, get to the frame and actually protect it. So I would say yes, sight unseen, I would say yes, but check with your crown supplier and see what they think. That's, that would be my guess. Um, Charlie, or is it Charlie? No, it's not, it's Clary, Claire? We'll say Claire. Uh, are you looking for workers? Would you take an auto tech apprentice, respect your work and appreciate sharing your knowledge with the YouTube? I'm not looking for workers and respectfully, no, I'm not looking for uh, any auto tech type apprentice. I think there is a misconception on um, what I actually do here. Um, I do run a full-time shop. However, uh, somebody hanging out with me all day likely wouldn't learn a lot. I mean, there's some days I don't do a lot because I'm, you know, writing estimates and talking to customers and, you know, helping the boys and, and things like that. So it's not, it's not a lot of fun and games here. You know, we do work, we get stuff done, but a lot of days are super boring. Um, you know, we're just fixing rusty junk. I, know, I, I think somebody, if somebody came to, you know, apprentice, uh, they would be quite bored and think it's, pretty well stupid would be my assumption. At least I would, because I think there's a, a thought perhaps that people have that like, oh, we're going to go there. We're going to diagnose this. We're going to do that. We're going to, you know, it's going to be fun. And, you know, we're going to get out the torch and burn stuff. And, you know, you just have, I think there's this vision uh, perhaps that people can work up in their mind of what they think actually happens here on a daily basis. And then when they show up, you know, there's a certain level of, of disappointment. Uh, at least that's what I would, that's what I think. I could be wrong. What do I know? I just live the life. <laughs> um, so that, that's what I think. I, I wouldn't take anybody on as an apprentice because I wouldn't want to disappoint. So that's my, that's my thing. 
I don't know. What do I know? We got to wrap this up at some point, guys. I mean, we're going on two hours, 10 minutes, 22 seconds as we speak with still 3,000 people watching. And 1995 thumbs up. We're five thumbs up away from 2,000. But uh, anyways, um, where are we at here? We'll, we'll answer a few more things and then uh, we'll go see what the, I'll have to go see what the lovely misses are. We're coming up on the nine o'clock hour, at least in my portion of the world. There are some people still living in the past from me and many others that are living in the future. Um, so we'll see what, uh, we'll see what rolls across the screen here. Uh, let's see. Boy, a lot of people asking about the young ladies that work there. Uh, Miss Hanner grew up, got married, moved on, became an RN, got a job. Uh, Miss Marie moved out of the area to her other area where her family lives in a different state and is doing different things and going to school. A um, lot of questions about that. So hopefully that uh, hopefully that answers that. Thanks, you, Junior. Junior. Um, let's see. Oh, goodness. Matthews, Archie. Yes, sir, we've already covered that topic. Um, building's done, almost done. Me and Mrs. O will have the building finished up this weekend. Uh, we got all our gas line and stuff put on. We still got to get our sign up and then get our chimney done, and then we're done. We're done for the season. And hopefully that all happens this weekend, which conveniently is my birthday. So I'll be working that day. Whatever day is the 25th, that is my birthday. That's got to be this weekend. Then today is number 22. Number 25 falls on a Saturday. Woo -woo. 42 years of age. Wow. Where did the time go? <laughs> Happy 60th. Oh, come on, hillbilly. You jerk. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, yes, deer season is coming up. And that is when we shut down October 1st. We will be closed. We're out of here. Um, seafoam fuel additive, question mark, question mark, question mark. I like seafoam fuel additive. And I also like Seafoam Deep Creep. Not a sponsor, you can buy it at Napper. Some of the best Panther P I've used to date. I do like seafoam fuel additive. Sure, it's good stuff. Um, Let's see. Only 12 behind me. Oh. Blazer. Blazer 02 LF. Just so you know, Blazer, I have not unfriended you on the Facebook. I won't say your real name, sir, but I know who you are. However, I have shut off the Facebook. We still have the Facebook self made auto page, but the SMA Erico personal page. It's done forever. We'll leave it at that. Uh, let's see. Oh, Uncle A. He says he went to the Wellsville campus for automotive in the late 90s. Made some good friends from your neck of the woods. Still learn from you, man. Thanks, Mike A. You're welcome, Mike A. And I believe that's where my boy Josh went. He was up in the Wellsville area. <laughs> I thought I was like 52. Wow. Yeah, Facebook, she gone. Yeah, um, yeah, the Facebook, like I say, it's just best. I know myself, and I know my mind, and I know what I'm capable of. And I find it's best to just stop. It's best for everyone. So that's why I didn't. I explained that way early on. So we'll go back there. We're not going to go back down that, uh, back down that rabbit hole, we'll call it. Yes. It is toxic, along with the most of the world, Joe. So I did explain that earlier. You can go back to the beginning. Not like back to the beginning, like, you know, first there was light that far, but back to the beginning of this video, two hours and 14 minutes and 49 seconds ago. <laughs> uh, Tyler, he says he's in school for aeronautics. What the thunder is aeronautics? And the instructor used one of my videos to de demonstrate a methodical approach to electrical troubleshooting. Wow. I would probably question <laughs> your teacher 
if he's using one of my videos to demonstrate a methodical approach. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, if you have a question about that, say, why are you using Erico's videos? This guy's a schmuck. He didn't make it through high school. <laughs> uh, Lou, 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 he loves the channel, and he's seen nearly all of the videos. No joke, so don't laugh. Straight face. I wish I lived closer to your shop. I'm about 300 miles-ish as the crow flies, but your knowledge and in-depth videos have saved my bacon. Wow, Lou. Uh, I do appreciate that. I'm glad that your bacon has been saved because nobody likes to waste bacon. And isn't a pig an amazing animal, come to think of it? Eats garbage, makes bacon. Amazing. What other animal does that? Um, uh, let's see. Is there any battery-powered chisels? Like a battery-powered air hammer? Yeah, pigs are delicious, aren't they? Um, Clive lives in the UK where they actually have the bacon sandwich. I remember watching the Scott Ray channel, a uh, great channel, and the guy eats a bacon sandwich, and I remember seeing that, and it's like bread and bacon, and that's it. And they have their rendition of, of Heinz uh, A1 steak sauce. I don't remember what it was called. It's still made by Heinz, so I remember ordering it online because I've seen it, and I'm like, I'm watching this guy, and I need to order some of this and make my own bacon sandwich. Bacon, and then bread, and then butter, and then bacon. I'm like, these guys are mad. HP brown sauce, there you go. It was HP sauce on bacon on frickin' bread with butter. I'm like, how do these guys live past 50? But anyhow, I do not know if they make a uh, cordless or electric air hammer. Uh, that I don't know. I think they make electric, you know, hammer drills and stuff that can be put into hammer mode. But I don't know if that really would fulfill your, your purpose. Yeah, bacon and eggs on bread I get, Clive, but just a bacon sandwich. Uh, like I say, I watch the Scott Ray channel and he's, you know, he's from across the pond over there and does a great job. But, uh, you know, the guy eats freaking bacon sandwiches and then... You know, naturally, I did it. I'm like, why didn't I think of this? You know, here in the United States, we have to put lettuce and tomato on them and call it a BLT. But really, you throw away the L and the T, and then you got a B sandwich. Hey, it's cameraman. Cameraman here. <laughs> there he is. Cameraman. I love that guy. He just scares me. I'll be honest with you. Um, there's not too many folks that scare me. Cameraman. He scares me. He's one of those guys that you just know. Like, if you're in a fight, he's the guy you want on your side. Nah, we'll leave it at that. Uh, yeah, big class, let's get rid of the salad. Uh, no, no, you are the man, cameraman. Uh, however, cameraman, I will tell you, uh, here at the shop we have we have walkie talkies so we don't have to so I don't have to go in the office or if I'm out in the parking lot or I'm somewhere's out of touch or Mrs. O or Jason or anybody they can get a hold of me and we all got handles you know Trinity she likes to be called the flamingo I don't know why but she's the flamingo uh Mrs. O her name for her has always been the vulture you know and that's what I call her the you know Vanessa I've always called her the vulture why because she'll peck your eyes out so on the radio, that's our handle. She's the vulture. Uh, Josh and Jason, they don't play along because they think it's childish. I'm mechanic man. And every time I talk on the radio, mechanic man here, I give them my best impersonation of the cameraman. And, uh, but I'm mechanic man. So anyways, hopefully that makes you feel good, cameraman, that you inspired me and inspired my CB, or not my CB handle, but my SMA, walkie-talkie handle of Mechanic Man. Not super original, I know, but it's fun, and I enjoy saying it every time. And just one time, when I pull out of the shop and I've got my radio with me, I dream of the day that that radio turns on, and I hear your voice, whether it comes from the heavens or across my microphone, but it says, What's it got, mechanic man, in your thunderous New York City accent? 
and then I just give it the no mercy reversi right here, rocking horses. But I'm pretty sure that the customers would be upset with me at that point. However, what I was thinking of doing, cameraman, and I'm glad you're here, and I don't mean to sidetrack too much, but I did want to get to hold of you, and I was going to, for a couple reasons. One, there's one thing that we talked about that I still got to get my letter off to you about, uh, you know, what's a neutral drop in my list of when it is appropriate to neutral drop a car. So I want to get that off to you. And the other thing is next year, here in Bath, New York, seven miles away, eight miles here from the shop, we have, which will be the 205th annual Steuben County Fair. This is people of Walmart on steroids, folks. If you like to watch people, you will love the Steuben County Fair. And they have a demolition derby. And what we need to do is I need to go down and visit cameraman, stunt man, blunt man, junk man. And I need to get some cars because I think the people would love to have a video series on A, building a derby car, and B, going to the demolition derby. And uh, you guys destroy some pretty damn nice cars, let's be honest. So, and perhaps we can orchestrate it so Stuntman can come up here and drive his own derby car. So, I need you to be on the lookout, either for a fantastic full-frame V8 car or a four-cylinder. And it has been my observation, watching the demolition derbies, that... The PT Cruisers do quite well um, with minor modifications, hold up quite well. But I would take anything, um, you know, six cylinder, preferably a little four cylinder or a full size V8. And uh, we'll just do what we got to do. So you keep that in mind, cameraman. We got a whole year and this, uh, this is going to happen. It's going to be good. We're going all the way. This cameraman would say, oh, he's sitting on a Grand Marquis right now. I have got some stories about Grand Marquis. I ran three of those in derbies, three different Grand Marquis, and I figured out all their little nuances. Lots, lots of little things I figured out on those. Whew. I'm getting excited now. I'm getting pumped. Whoa, Greg. Hey, appreciate that, buddy. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, an Imperial. Yeah, if you could get me you know, a Chrysler Imperial. I think, I could be wrong. Some There was at one time in the Bath Demolition Derby, the Stony Roberts Demolition Derby, I do not believe that you could run an Imperial. I think they were one of the few cars that were outlawed. I'm not a Demolition Derby guru. I am simply observant when I go as far as what runs and what doesn't. And I don't believe that you could run Imperials. Um, however, they have this V8 class now that these cars seem to be quite heavily modified. Um, so I, I don't really know the rules. All I do know is that when I would go into the demolition derby, and we went to many demolition derbies, I never went with a buddy. My brother would run, but there was always like a little buddy system there. And I think it would be make a fantastic video series to meet the people of the demolition derby. They have their own little cult-like following and their own little cliques and clans in the in the derby and it's quite interesting to see and there's this unspoken rule of you know who you hit and who you help and who you don't and things like that well the advantage of me going was i don't know anybody I and mean, i don't care so i would always go for what they call best of show uh i'm the guy who's gonna smoke you full track pedal to the metal because i would rather have the crowd stand up and cheer and get one good hit than be the guy who won the dang thing i don't care about winning it i just want to full track somebody at 50 miles an hour you know head-on collision you know that makes me feel good winning it eh, whatever i think you win 500 bucks big deal you're gonna have way more than that into the car but uh yeah i just like to go out have a good time put it to the rug and just rocket horse that thing with the shifter until something blows up. Then you bring it to the shop, you beat the dents out of it, you weld stuff back together and you do it again. That's it. No friends, no problem. Full throttle, baby. 
And uh, that's that. So keep that in mind, cameraman. That was all I, I said all that to say that. Uh, thank you, expert next expert network. <laughs> we do have to go here soon, folks. We're wrapping this up in five minutes. Two and a half hours is way too long. Uh, thanks for all your videos. Uh, they have probably saved me thousands of dollars by doing repairs myself. I'll be sure to send you a bill. Just kidding. Uh, my daughter's name is Trinity as well. I thought I was crazy. You said it first. <laughs> my daughter's name is Trinity because Mrs. O and I watched The Matrix and we really liked the name Trinity. People are like, oh, her name's Trinity? That's so spiritual. Like, nope, it has nothing to do with the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit. It does have to do with the Matrix, though, which is kind of the opposite of Christianity when you think about it. But anyhow, uh, we just like the name. That's why we chose it. Some people think that's weird. Like, you just chose a name that doesn't really mean anything? That's true. Uh, the 607, this guy's again from the 607 up according. We get so many cars we send to the junkyard every year. Let's get them together and do it. By the way, Maynard's Auto and Corning is a shop. Stop on by. I probably will. And uh, yes, yes, the derby needs to happen. I miss doing the derby. Uh, it was always enjoyable. Um, Mechanic Man Devil Derby car, best idea ever. I know, Orion. And I do have some decent video filming equipment. I do have uh, two drones that take very good footage where we could actually display. Uh, we could live stream it from there. There's all kinds of things that go through my mind and I talk to Mrs. O about it. And I tell her like, we gotta do this lady. We gotta do it. The people would love it. And they would love it. And it would be highly entertaining. However, we couldn't show all the derby stuff because there is a certain level of cheating that you have to do uh, to be competitive, I think. I don't really know that for a fact, and I can't really ever attest to actually having cheated myself on the demolition derby. But um, it could happen. You know what I'm saying? I think the rules have changed. It's been many years since I've done it, and I do see that some of the folks that do do it seem to have one heck of an investment in it. I mean, right down to running brand new engines. Um, yeah, so, and I think, I think there should be some sort of way that the folks, the YouTube people, can not, not so much contribute to it, but perhaps get their piece of the action. How can, uh, and, and I want you guys to think about this because we can perhaps elaborate on this uh, a little bit later, but... Could it be uh, in a sense that, you know, we could do a send the sticker, get a sticker type thing. Like I could buy a bunch of, you know, SMA stickers and you send me a sticker to slap on the derby car and I'd send you back an SMA sticker. You know, there could be something like that. And I'm just thinking out loud here. Um, you know, I think that's, that's plausible. And then when it's all done, you know, you can say like, hey, look at this. You know, we watched the video of this, you know, this derby. And boom, you know, there's my sticker, you know, and there's, you know, there's this or whatever, you know, and I, and I wouldn't be looking to, you know, to, you know, have you guys patronize me for it or anything. Certainly we could afford to, you know, get a derby car and, you know, do what we have to do. We don't spend a lot of money on them. You know, it might take whatever, you know, we got to get the car from, from stuntman and cameraman. So whatever they charge us for the car, you know, if we get it for scrap value and then, you know, whatever it is we need to put in it, you know, if we got to, you know, buy some of the metal for, the protection apparatus, the, uh, you know, the support and cage for the fuel tank and, you know, fuel lines, stuff like that. Uh, oh, cameraman says it's going to be free. We're not going to, we're not going to take your cars, cameraman. We'll, we will definitely, we'll do what we need to do. And uh, I just think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be great. Um, yeah, man, I, I'm super excited. I can't wait for next year now. Because I think you guys will be on board with it. We can build a derby car. And then, but I want you guys to be able to, to be on it, to be a, to be a piece of it. And, uh, you know, to be able to say, hey, look, you know, that's my sticker. Or that's my name or, you know, whatever, you know, and help, uh, you know, with ideas and stuff, you know, because we got to make it big and loud and obnoxious and, you know, do what we need to do. So, I'm pumped, man. Cameraman is pumped.
I can't wait. And uh, it's going to be great. And especially if we can get Stuntman up here. Could you imagine Stuntman in Bath, New York? They wouldn't know what to do. This guy's out on the infield. I can see it now. He's yelling. There's, pe there's people fighting. His hair's messed up. His teeth are fantastic. Totally jealous about that. It's going to be good. Hey, Luna. Come here, Bunker. Come here. Come here. Hi. There we go. Hey, kitty. Want to give me love in there? It's a good girl. This is Luna. Tick. But it's going to be so good, folks. Um, yeah, it's going to be It's gonna be great. Must have incredible liability insurance. Uh, the demolition derby, nobody cares. I don't, I don't know what happens if you die there. I think they just take you out with the forklift with the car. Um, but it's going to be, oh, it's going to be great. I just can't, I just, I just can't fathom cameraman and stuntman in my small town. Redneck Central, couple guys from Queens. I don't know what would happen, but it would be great. <laughs> ah, the Night of Destruction by SMA. It's going to be epic. So you folks look forward to that. Now that it has been said, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, it's going to happen next year, folks. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Cameraman is pumped. He, I, I hope he finds us a really good car. Like I say, hopefully a V8, but if not, hopefully a four-cylinder, hopefully a six-cylinder. I'm hoping for anything. It's just got to be solid. And it's got to be able to withstand some no mercy reverses. And I think that cameraman and stuntman have tested so many automobiles and their transmissions. They know what works. Don't let me down, cameraman. I'm, we're counting on you. All of us are counting on you for going all the way. Maybe he can mention in his next video. This is going to be great. And then the thing is, if people came to watch this derby at the Steuben County Fair... The place is already packed. I mean, this old grandstand, I always see this thing. It's this, like this half a Kwanzaa hut is what it looks like. So the old Kwanzaa hut buildings they built back in war times. So it's like they took one of those, cut it in half, put a bunch of wooden slats across it, and packed it full of millions of, or hundreds of people with you know no engineering whatsoever. So I don't know what it takes to keep this thing from collapsing. I've, I ponder that each time I sit in it like, when this thing collapse, will I die? You know, where am I gonna be when this thing falls in? And this thing's already full. Every redneck in the county is at this thing. But if myself and cameraman and stuntman were there, I don't know what they would do with the people. Um, it would be amazing. Everybody coming to watch stuntman live, just out there beating the balls right off anything he brought. It would be good. And, uh, Cameraman, you tell Stuntman if he comes, and if we end up in the same heat, I don't know him. And I'm not going to pretend I do, because it's every man for himself out there. And I expect the same from him. If we're in the same heat, we're no longer friends. We're enemies, okay? And if I get a chance to hit him in the driver's door, I'm gonna. I'm coming for him. You tell him. <laughs> no, don't tell him that. Tell him, tell him I really like him. I apologize. Don't kick my ass. <laughs> That's all right, folks. Uh, it's late. We're four minutes, five seconds past the time that I told you. And I'm so excited, I'm not even gonna be able to sleep. Perhaps it's the coffee. But just thinking about this demolition derby, it's gonna be fantastic. Thank you all for the super chats, for coming, for stopping by, and uh, for re-upping me. For making me excited uh it's gonna be great we've got about 11 months to get to uh to the demolition derby time and it's gonna it's gonna be good um uh let's see just met you real quick sorry jim we're just getting ready to shut cut it shut her down uh what's this one of my favorite knuckle busting buds taking some time to chill out awesome did you join some of my 2500 bourbon Aluminum, get the big hammer. Tell Mrs. O we love her cameos too. Peace, peace out, Jim. Peace out to all you guys. Look forward to seeing each and every one of you at the Steuben County Fair next year. 
and the demolition derby. I hope, and it is my prayer, that I don't fail in the first five seconds of the derby and disappoint each and every one of you. And that's why I'm hoping that cameraman and the stunt man and junk man and blunt man all get to come. And it's going to be great. And uh, we're going to have to make darn tootin' that we have a good car and that it's going to be worth it. And it's going to be fun. And I look forward to taking your guys' advice who are experienced demolition derby experts and putting together a car. And we're going to have so much fun. And think of different ways in which you can participate and feel part of the project um, without a lot of or no expense would be great. Um, I'm thinking the sticker idea might be a good way right off hand, but you guys think about it. And we'll talk about it next week. On the next What's Up Wednesday, we're going all the way, folks. And you guys go all the way in that comment section, the questions, the comments, the concerns, the Facebook, the Insty. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. And uh, thanks for watching. I think it's all weird at this point. See you guys.